Joe Novak at 1,000 yard ground gainer synonymous in Northern Illinois. It started with William Andrews in 1999. Then to Thomas Hammock, a two time 1,000. Turner close to 5,000 yards in his career and then capped off by the sensational Garrett Wolf over 5,000 yards of real estate gain. Who's next in the NIU process? We find out. It's Eastern Michigan coming in to see Northern Illinois next on ESPN+. Plus. Absolutely glorious football Saturday. We swing you inside Husky Stadium on the campus of Northern Illinois University. Welcome everybody on ESPN Plus. Key Mac West Division battle. Jeff Jennings got his Eastern Michigan Eagles in to see Joe Novak and the Northern Illinois Huskies. And as the Huskies come out of the turf here at Husky Stadium, we're delighted to see each and every one of you. Welcome to the telecast booth. Michael Regai alongside former Marshall running back Doug Chapman. Now at 0-2. Both these football programs are hungry. They're thirsting for victory, a little bit parched right now. And, Doug, it made practice uh, with an edge this week and a definite purpose for both teams. There has to be a purpose. Both teams are 0-2. Northern Illinois lost to Southern Illinois, which is a 1-AA program at home. They're back at home this week. They have to be hungry. Well, let's start with Eastern Michigan. Now, this is a football team that has only been able to get in the end zone one time with uh, one touchdown in their two losses. So they're looking for more explosive plays. And to that end, quarterback Andy Schmidt and tailback Pierre Walker, they've got to deliver and be home run hitters. They have to be home run hitters. Pierre Walker needs to pick it up on the ground game, and they've got to control the ball, slow it down, make Schmidt not make too many mistakes, and, and control the ball on offense. Well, here at Northern Illinois, they're looking at seven consecutive winning seasons. That's Joe Nolan. Novak staple the Dean of Mid-American Conference coaches and they're 0 2 as well. They lost a fourth quarter lead to Southern Illinois last Saturday. Now, junior quarterback Dan Nicholson has engineered big wins on the road, so he's no stranger to that. But Nicholson's uh, the turnover margin is at a minus seven, so they're looking for him to finish drives today, Doug. That's what he has to do. He's won big games. They just have to slow it down, get back to their bread and butter, which is running the football, take the ball out of his hands so much, everything will be fine for Nicholson today. Isn't it running the football here in Northern Illinois? Hey, are these the legs of the next 1,000 yard ground gainer in this program? Justin Anderson may be sitting on the cusp of that. Get set to go. Eastern Michigan's in the Cal to see the Huskies coming up next. This moment brought to them by GMAC. Automotive financing, mortgage, real estate, insurance. The family of GMAC Financial Services. It comes from stadium stairs at five in the morning. From suicides to your lung scream uncle. And two a days when it's hot enough to fry an egg on your forehead. It's sweat. And there's more to sweat than just water. No wonder, no water, no flavored water, no other sports drink on the planet helps put back what sweat takes out better than Gatorade. How would you like to run a business of your own from the comfort of your own home? It's not as crazy as it sounds. I made over $100,000 a year from my home. I just made a down payment for our vacation home, working part time. Yeah, you have to be crazy to visit this website and find out how to start your home business. Crazy like a fox. Log on and get your success kit. I made $5,000 yesterday. Crazy? I don't think so. Log on now. Today's ESPN Plus game out of DeKalb, Illinois, being brought to you by Allstate, proud sponsors of college football. Are you in good hands? Also by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. By Automart.com. You find a car, you find a dealer. By First Energy, our energy is working for you. And by Gatorade, who asks, is it in you? Chamber of Commerce style, it is in DeKalb, Illinois today, all along the campus of Northern Illinois University as Jeff Jenick brings his 
Eastern Michigan Eagles in as uh, their own one and back play. They lost 38 16 to Ball State uh, last week and for Jeff Jenick his fourth season and uh, as we said Doug he is looking for his offense to finish only one touchdown in the first two losses to Pitt and to Ball State. They have to get something going on offense. They have they've only been averaging I believe 3.8 yards per play. They have to get some explosive plays on offense get some production slow these games down establish a running game. That'll have definitely help get some things going. Those are out of our keys to the game. There's Joe Novak. Uh, he is the dean of Mid-American Conference coaches now in his 12th season here. And this is a man that, uh, of course, uh, has uh, been no stranger to winning football games, not only here at home, but uh, in with this program. It's taken him to uh, three bowl games in the last four years. Doug, what about the Olimar keys to the game for Northern Illinois coming off that very, very disappointing loss to Southern Illinois? They have to avoid turning the ball over. They have, I believe, seven give giveaways this year. Their, their, their turnover margin, they're negative, and they have to be husky tough. What I mean by that is they have to run the football. That's what they're known to do here. They've had a eight They've had eight years of a thousand yard rusher and that's what they need to get back to is putting the ball in the running back's hands letting them slow the game down and just be tough up front move the football on the ground near and dear to your heart Doug Chapman running the football huh you did it Marshall and boy they do it here now here's one of the uh, the the big rule NCAA rules uh, uh, that has been altered this year is the kickoffs uh, now are uh, from the 30 yard line and what we're seeing is uh, more returns and uh, more opportunities for big kickoff returns with the football being teed up at the 30. That definitely is a plus for the offense. You're getting the ball around the 40, 43, 44 yard line, and you can't ask for better field position if you're an offensive coordinator. All right, Patrick George back in that deep spot as uh, Sean Dutcher's got it uh, teed up. Get set. We're ready to go out of uh, Northern Illinois as uh, this is George from the 12 yard line for Northern Illinois. Nice return for Patrick George as he steps his way out to the uh, 34 yard line. So George getting his first opportunity at kick return work. So let's take a look at this Northern Illinois offense. And as we said, they are a minus seven now in the turnover margin. It's something that they usually take very good care of the football and something that usually doesn't happen for this program. As we have got a uh, flag on that uh, that kickoff return that George returned out to the the 34. So. Referee uh, Stan Evans and his crew. After the play was over, dead ball personal foul on the receiving team. Number 99 late hit. Foul was penalized 15 yards from the end of the run. First down, Northern Illinois. That's junior defensive tackle Craig Rush, the starter. And he, uh, there's something that uh, Joe Novak, uh, his system, that we haven't seen things like that during the course of time that they've been so steady year in and year out. They're usually steady. They, they're a very disciplined football team. I remember playing against them when I was at Marshall. And, and mistakes such as that, that's what backs up an offense that's had problems this year. They don't need penalties on the opening kickoff. All right, a good look at uh, Dan Nicholson, as we said, uh, the 195-pound junior quarterback out of Brother Rice High School here in the Chicagoland area. They started twice last year, including the point set of bowl. A motion from tailback Justin Anderson. And on that quick drop, Nicholson will find Anderson. Had to make a move at the 25-yard line before uh, he was swarmed on as Lyle Garrison made the stop uh, on that corner for Eastern Michigan and they got some help from Darren Matthews. All right, let's take a look at this Northern Illinois offense. Justin Anderson has to uh, carry the bulk of the load. Montel Clanton hurt, won't go. Britt Davis, one of the top wide receivers in Northern Illinois history with Greg Turner. David uh, Corin uh, Kavich is uh, battling back with injury. This offensive line, Chris Acevedo, one of the best, along with Eddie Adamski, and Joe Novak said they've uh, really impressed him. I give the football to that hard running tailback as uh, he found that seam, and that's Justin Anderson, the 213 pound third year sophomore who rolled for 78 yards on the ground last week. So Anderson with a first down to move the sticks. This Eastern Michigan defensive line after that 15 yard game. Jason Jones is one of the best in the nation. Keep an eye on number 83 today. This young man is uh, probably a first round draft pick in the NFL. Andre Hatchett, Daniel Holtzclaw, Darren Matthews, the three top tacklers on this Eastern Michigan squad and of course uh, Lyle Garrison is uh, in the, that secondary on the, that one corner along with Derek Hunter on the other. Nicholson will gun that out and it is caught 
as he hooks up with Greg Turner. Turner, the uh, junior, uh, with that uh, that quick hitch as he tried to turn over that midfield strike. It looks like NIU is getting very, very comfortable on offense. They had a big run up the middle, which is their bread and butter. They're throwing a lot of short passes towards the sideline, controlling the ball. Not trying to do anything crazy downfield, playing nice controlled football right now. I'm sure Coach Novak is pleased. How about Dan Nicholson last week? He hit 15 consecutive throws, a school record, breaking the record that was set by Phil Horvath. Now Nicholson wants to go up top again. Now he's going to keep the football. Dan Nicholson inside the 40, down to the 39-yard line before he was finally taken down by Daniel Holtzclaw, that tough middle linebacker. You see right here, he drops back. He finds no one open, wisely pulls the ball down, and just runs upfield, picks up the first down. But at the same time, these are things that's going to keep him from turning the ball over, i.e. interception, which he's had a problem with earlier in the season. Making smarter decisions with the football is just going to keep their drives going and put more points on the board for NIU. That'll move the sticks as uh, this uh, drive now has reached the 39-yard line in Northern Illinois. One of the top teams in the nation during uh, this last decade. Now go back to that running game, that stretch play. This is Justin Anderson. Anderson to that second level. He's got a Northern Illinois first down. Give Anderson uh, 11 on that carry. How big is it for Justin Anderson to get a lot of touches today, uh, uh, Doug? Because, again, Montel Clanton, who'd been the starting tail, is injured now for the year. It's a huge confidence boost. You can see right here he takes it off tackle. The first man to touch him, the secondary guy, has to drag him down. He's running through arm tackles, running strong. This right here is what they would love to do on offense, control the clock and just run the football, manhandle Eastern Michigan up front. Well, that's what they do here at Northern Illinois, as uh, we uh, described to you in our, in our tees uh, coming on the air today. And right away, Jeff Jennick is going to get his defense uh, huddled up as Eastern Michigan is going to burn their first time out. But you know, finishing drives for both of these football teams, Doug, I mean, here's Northern Illinois last week, a 17-point lead in the fourth quarter, a couple of turnovers, a couple of Southern Illinois touchdowns, and uh, bang, a, what looked like a sure victory turned into defeat on their home turf here to Southern Illinois. And that drives coaches crazy when your team could not finish ball games. It's easy to start off strong. A lot of teams can start off the first half, first two quarters, play very enthusiastic, very motivated, but it's very hard for teams to keep that going for four complete quarters. And I believe last week NIU just had a letdown in the second half. They got complacent, and it came back and bit them in the end. Uh, Justin Anderson already just two totes of the football for 26 yards. And again, following uh, that sophomore center, Eddie Adamski, who makes all the line calls out over the football who wears number 50 and Chris Acevedo and uh, John Brost a senior and junior tackle back to the ground game Anderson well, this time he ran into Daniel Holtzclaw and Holtzclaw the leading tackler with 19 hits in the uh, the first uh, two games for Eastern Michigan very active Jeff Jennick just loves him there's Holtzclaw wears number 44 always around the football Doug how did he get from Enid Oklahoma away from the Sooners or the Cowboys of Oklahoma and Oklahoma State it looks like they came up with a steal when they got him he, he's all over the field he makes a lot of plays he runs sideline to sideline very well he fills the A-gap downhill very well, and he's a tackling machine. Now the linebackers, as we said, the top three tacklers on this football team, Holtzclaw with Andre Hatchett and Darren Matthews that flank him. Give the football again to Justin Anderson, and he got stacked up and taken down. So Jeff Jennick calls that timeout, and his defense starting to get things done now. That's Spencer Smith out of McKenzie High School. All of you uh, that are checking out Eastern Michigan around the Motor City of Detroit, you remember Spencer Smith, 230-pound junior. So uh, two strong plays defensively here for Eastern Michigan. Eastern Michigan has to get something going right now. Northern Illinois is driven the ball down the field at will. And right now, Eastern Michigan is gut check time to see what they're made of right now. On the line to make down at the 18-yard line, three wide for junior quarterback Dan Nicholson. Nicholson will step up, fire that throw, and it went right off the hands of a wideout Matt Simon. Simon had uh, run that in route uh, dug by the first down sticks. He ran the in route where he was supposed to be. It was a great route, very catchable ball. I think he just heard footsteps coming and didn't want to pull that one in. A lot of times the receiver will go through the middle or be in traffic and lose focus on the football because he's anticipating the hit that's coming. All right out of the hole to Greg Turner. This will be a 45-yard field goal attempt for one of the best in the nation, Chris Nendek. 
on Mendek a lot of leg and he has split the sticks he hit it dead center to put Northern Illinois on the board he's a Luke Rosa finalist Chris Mendek and he's put three on the board Eastern Michigan with a football when we come back on ESPN plus he likes sporty. She prefers sensible. He's into convertibles. She's into convenience. He likes to take it with him. She likes to bring it to her. So what do they have in common? They shop with confidence from the dealers in Automart Magazine and Automart.com. In print. Or online. Use the ad code in Automart Magazine. Enter that code on Automart.com. Get color photos and detailed vehicle information. You're just one page. Or one click away from the perfect car. Shop smart. Use Automart. You are killing me, Birkwood. Hey, take the secret shortcut. Never heard of the secret shortcut. Because it's a secret ham. Take it. Not bad, Birkwood. You ever taken this trail, Birkwood? Once, including now. Now would be a good time to have accident forgiveness. Not too bad. Or new car replacement. Your choice auto insurance. Only from Allstate. Birkwood! Are you in good hands? 6,400 student athletes. 1.7 million fans. 32 bowl champions. College bowl games where everybody wins. Brought to you by the Football Bowl Association. Melty Cheese. Taco Bell's new Cheesy Beefy Melt. To get seasoned beef, melty, melty, and even more glorious Melty Cheese, think outside the bun. Oh, yeah, you've, you've got to have uh, some kind of sun shield on today. What a Chamber of Commerce uh, type uh, afternoon uh, for Joe Novak in Northern Illinois. They couldn't have ordered it up any better. 65 degrees. Sunshine all over uh, DeKalb, Illinois, about 35 miles from the city of Chicago. And Chris Nendek and the Huskies are on the board as uh, Nendek straight and true with that 45-yard field goal hit. Capped off a nine-play, 53-yard drive. So Danteo Gage, who wears number two, along with the Dwayne Priest. They are kind of stacked up in that I formation. They want the football in the hands of Gage. How about a 90-yard kickoff return for a touchdown last week for Gage in Rynearson Stadium against Ball State? And Mendek will hit it. And this is Dwayne Priest from the five. Priest will cross the 20 where uh, he got belted down. Patrick George, that freshman out of Chicago, led the special teams hit. He wears number 33. I don't think people understand how good a quality kicker can be. You have a guy like Nendig who can kick the ball, even though they're backed up with the new rule in college football now. He still puts the ball deep enough to where Eastern, Eastern Michigan is starting now at their 21-yard line. Good look at the third-year sophomore from St. John's, Michigan. The six-foot-four quarterback, Andy Schmidt. Boy, Schmidt wasn't able to begin throwing until July as uh, he underwent soul, shoulder surgery that cost him spring football this year. With Pierre Walker now offset with him. Now Schmidt on that quarterback keep. And he ran into a host of a red-shirted Huskies. All right, let's take a look at this Eastern Michigan Eagle offense. Just one touchdown now in this, their 24th possession of the year. Pierre Walker, the young man out of Detroit Central High School, has got to make things happen. Pretty good receiving group. Keep an eye on number 18, DeAnthony White. 67-yard touchdown reception. Young man from uh, Georgia. Now, this offensive line, uh, the leader of it is T.J. Lang, the 300-pounder. He's tough, and this old line has given up just a couple of sacks this year and that has very much pleased Jeff Jennick on second and nine here's the first carry of the day for Pierre Walker and we've got a flag on that as Walker was stopped by Bradley Pruitt uh, where's number 24 that junior free safety movement on Northern Illinois it's going to cost them five we say we uh, go through our housekeeping and uh, give you the starting Outside 11 on the defense number 56 five-yard penalty from the previous spot 
replay second down. That was Brandon Bice who wears number 56 and was caught. Craig Rush and Larry English on their right side. English, a Bronco Nagurski watch list uh, defensive lineman. He is a very, very talented from that rush end spot. John Atranchitella moves over for the injured Tim McCarthy. He's in the middle. And Melvin Rice, a do-it-all cornerback out of Chicago. Now on second and four, Schmidt looking to put it up, and he almost had it picked off. That was almost intercepted. As the Northern Illinois' Corey Hansen, that 209-pound sophomore linebacker, almost had the pick as Andy Schmidt threw into coverage. You see he drops back right here. Nice little fake underneath, and he scrolls to his right, looks downfield, and this is a great play. Great play. Actually, that's maybe a ball the quarterback might have thought about throwing elsewhere or just tucking and running with it. Like in Eastern Michigan start to move the sticks and finish drives. They're looking at a third and four with three wide receivers now. Schmidt to put it up. And that throw is caught as he found his tight end, Ken Bonet, the former quarterback. And Bonet needed to get to the 31-yard line, and he just got enough. They needed four. He got five. First down, Eastern Michigan. Great route by Bonet. He knows where the sticks are. Gets to the sticks. Nice option route. He breaks out. Guy draped on him. Great catch. Those are the type of plays Eastern Michigan has to make when they're on offense to keep their drives alive and avoid three and outs. You know, it's funny, as uh, Coach Jeff Jennick, too, Doug, was telling us this week, said they've had a couple of sustained drives in that pit game in the opener, but they weren't able to culminate and put points on the board, and that's what he's looking for today. Finishing drives. And an inside delay, and that's Pierre Walker. And uh, Walker got stacked up. You see that uh, that Northern Illinois defensive front, Craig Rush, who wears number 99. We mentioned uh, Larry English in on the stop of uh, Pierre Walker. Just one on that, that game for Walker, so let's call it second down at nine. Down at nine. He hit the 10 minute mark. The Lightning are with us on ESPN Plus out of uh, Northern Illinois today on this beautiful football Saturday. Michael Regai alongside Doug Chapman. Andy Schmidt out of the shotgun. Now that pocket broke down, and Schmidt's on the move out close to the 40 yard line. Schmidt was a uh, knife down by uh, Josh Allen, the 211-pound junior, who wears number nine. I'm not sure if you picked up Pierre Walker on that. He picked up the blitz in the corner off the end. Did a great job. And also, it gave the quarterback a little bit of a lane to scramble. That's the thing the running back has to do to take pressure. Like you said, the quarterback is coming off of shoulder surgery. So he might be a little tentative with tucking and running. The less hits you can keep off, the, the amount of hits you can keep off him, the better for him today. And get flashbacks for you, having to pick up uh, blitzes coming off the corner? It's not fun. <laughs> Third and four now for Schmidt. The line to make is at the 41. Quarterback keep Andy Schmidt. And he is uh, belted down before he uh, gets to the 40-yard line. So that's going to force Eastern Michigan to punt the football away as uh, that hit came from Corey Hansen. Well, they faked this like a design underneath draw for the quarterback. I'm not sure, really too sure about that one. That's the kind of play I either want to work my tight end or actually give the ball to the running back. Let your guys that are used to running with the football have the football and try to make plays that convert the first down. Well, Zach Johnson, as Andy Schmidt has to take his offense uh, back over with uh, head coach Jeff Jennick. Andy Johnson will hit this from around the 27, 28 yard line. Greg Turner in that single safety. Oh, and Johnson really got it to turn over. Turner will bobble at the 10. Well, Turner in a lot of trouble as he is swarmed on back near the five yard line. What an outstanding boot from Zach Johnson. And Greg Turner had the problems uh, handling the football. Well, Northern Illinois will start their second drive of the afternoon inside their own 10 yard line. As Greg Turner with some problems on that 51-yard boot by Zach Johnson. With Sirius Satellite Radio, you can hear what you've been missing. 69 music channels, from rock to pop, hip-hop to country, all 100% commercial free. Get the best sports, like NASCAR 24-7, the NBA, and every NFL game every week, everywhere. Get the biggest and best in talk and entertainment, including, of course, Howard Stern. Get over 130 channels and hear what you've been missing. Welcome to Sirius, the best radio on radio. Now, see, when people think of GEICO, right, they think of car insurance and, of course, saving money. But sometimes that can lead even the savviest driver astray. Take, for example, the motorcycle owner. 
He calls Geico wanted to save money on his car insurance, only to realise that he doesn't actually own a car. Well, needless to say, he's quite embarrassed, isn't he? Doesn't matter. Geico insures motorcycles and ATVs as well. That way, no one ends up looking foolish. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Mac Football on My 50 Chicago is sponsored by Menards. Insulate your home with quality products from Menards. Save big money on heating costs this winter with John's Manville Insulation. R11 is just $7.99 a roll after rebate. Plus, get up to a $500 tax credit with qualifying purchases. Ideal five-star premium insulated garage doors are on sale. They feature an insulated core with steel inside and out. A 9x7 is $329. A 16x7 is $579. Plus, there are zero payments and no interest till summer with your big card. Save big money at Menards. How long does it take to get to VW Heaven? You're there. That was fast. Online is even faster. To kill her, Daniel. Somehow to bring him to justice. The best Western since Unforgiven is also the number one movie in America. You ain't gonna make it. Russell Crowe, Christian Bale, 310 to Yuma. Rated R, now playing. Yeah, their brand of football finery as in uh, showing some skin uh, here in that northern Illinois uh, student section today. Huskies with their 3-0 lead. Let's take a look at our Kaiser Permanente injury report. Uh, Kaiser Permanente encourages you to thrive. Visit kp.org for more information. And Joe Novak is without his starting tailback, Montel Clanton. Uh, he is out probably for the year, knee injury. And with Tim McCarthy, who was banged up pretty much all of summer camp, that starting middle linebacker, he is gone as well. So there is two key performers on each side of the football that Joe Novak has to go without here just two weeks into the season. Two key performers in two key positions. Running back and middle linebacker, your signal caller on your defense and your go-to guy on offense. Now let's see what Northern Illinois does with their second possession. They uh, put three on the board in their first and get the football on that isolation play to tailback of Justin Anderson. Steinmetz High School out of Chicago is fifth carry of the afternoon, a third year sophomore. Doug Chapman, you were an all Mac performer for three straight seasons at Marshall. Running backs, it uh, takes a little bit of feel to adjust to the speed of the game when you come out of high school. It definitely does. The blocking schemes are different, people are moving faster. There's a million more plays you have to know. And it's just, it just takes a while to get everything down and get comfortable back there. Anderson's going to get a chance to get very much lathered up. Nicholson off play action. The fire and it's caught. That's Britt Davis. Davis making that grab. Well, Davis, uh, outstanding receiver here. Young man that uh, wears number seven and one of the best in Northern Illinois history. And right now, the nice little play action. It wasn't the greatest fake in the world, but the fact that they can run the ball is keeping the linebackers in and letting the receivers get behind them, what they call the soft spot in the zone. Sit down, make a catch, make a guy miss, get upfield, and move the chains. And a Broadview, Illinois, uh, the fastest ever do, the 100 uh, reception mark and above in Northern Illinois history. History. That's a first down for Davis. Now Nicholson under pressure, and he's going to throw that football away. Joe Novak's looking for that type of decision. As a fan watching the game, you're wondering why he may have done that. But as a coach, you're actually glad he did that. You live to fight what they call live to fight another down. Instead of him trying to force the ball downfield, do too much with it, turn it over, put it on the ground, throw the ball away. Down, you didn't lose any yardage. Get the ball right back. Keep the ball moving. And Eric Young uh, had beat his block. Young, who wears number 92, was put some heat on from that defensive end spot. Second to ten now. Pair of wides for Nicholson. Give the football to tailback Justin Anderson. Anderson's got the corner and a lot more. First down, Justin Anderson before he finally got ushered out of bounds. So Anderson on his sixth carry of the afternoon. Where did he get those blocks from, Doug Chapman? That huge right side of the line. They're pulling around. They're like they're, they're pulling the backside guard, pulling the backside tackle, and they're getting to the second level, and they're putting guys on the ground and shielding them off. Where he's just picking a hole and turning up north and south, getting big yardage out of it. Six carries for 45 yards after that 16-yard ramble for Justin Anderson. Anderson went for 78 yards on 21 carries in the loss to Southern Illinois. Anderson again with his heavy workload, but this time he got dragged down from behind. Well, Anderson take it down after a very short gain on first down. Now we're absolutely delighted you're with us on ESPN Plus today as uh, this Mac West Division battle comes at you. 
Brigham Field here at Husky Stadium on the campus of Northern Illinois University alongside Doug Chapman. I'm Michael Regai. So both these football teams, as we said, coming on the air today for you. They are parched. They are thirsty for victory. Both start 0-2, and, and both felt it should be a little bit better than that. Once again, Justin Anderson. Anderson got a good block from wide receiver Britt Davis, and he's got a first down out at the 48-yard line. And that's one thing that good running teams do. If you ever notice a team that has a great tailback, their wide receivers always block well downfield. You see Anderson right here. They're just running off tackle. They're getting the linemen. They're throwing great blocks in the hole, cutting guys, and he's not getting touched until he gets to the secondary. And when you're in the first quarter and your safety is made almost every tackle, that's not a good sign on defense. We talk about the leaders of uh, the, the safeties, a couple of the safeties and uh, the cornerbacks on this Eastern Michigan football team are in the top uh, eight uh, tacklers. One more tie for Justin Anderson, and he spun right into the grasp of middle linebacker Daniel Holtzclaw. Holtzclaw wears number 44, got some help from Darren Matthews, who wears number four, his linebacking mate. You can see. You see right here, Britt Davis again getting a good block. And as you see right now, Anderson making the spin move. Those are what I call comfortable moves that running backs make that they don't make until they're actually comfortable. They're getting the feel of the game. You sometimes want to call it getting into the zone. The more carries a running back gets, he works the lather up, mm -hmm. gets comfortable with the blocking scheme. It seems like Anderson's getting that way right now. Well, that was Britt Davis on that block on that previous play. Now, three wide receiver look to the right on second and five. Audibleizing that junior quarterback, Dan Nicholson. Five-step drop. Nicholson will gun the out, and he's got Greg Turner caught by Turner, who's on the move inside the 35 and down to the 32-yard line. Well, Dan Nicholson uh, checking down and had uh, trips up to the right and found Turner standing by himself. Great play. He's sitting wide open right at the sticks, and that's what a good running game can do. Condenses the box, creates man-to-man -man coverage, lets the receivers run around his face, thus you have a wide-open receiver. This drive started at the eight yard line after that uh, muffed punt return by Greg Turner. A Turner with his second reception on the afternoon. That one was good for 15 yards. Back to the ground game. This is back up tail. Chad Spann. Spann with a strong uh, effort on his first carry of the afternoon. Spann inside the 20 down to the 19 yard line. That's 13 yards and a first down for backup tailback Chad Spann. He's a true freshman out of Indianapolis. They just keep churning them out. They've got a lot of run. They've got a great tradition of good running backs here. And it seems like every guy they put back there is productive. And remember again, playing without Montel Clanton. Now Clanton has led this football team in the first two weeks. Joe Novak. He says we run the football 87 yards in this first quarter, most of it from Justin Anderson. Nicholson to put it up, swing it out. Anderson looking for a block from Davis. Got inside the 15 yard line before he was finally uh, wrestled down by Andre Hatchett. Give Hatchett a credit. Where's number 20? Doug, he got off that block of Britt Davis and made the stop. He was able to get off that block. It was a great, great play by him. Davis had his man. It's just he just at the last minute was able to, to, to unlatch and get a hand on and get a hand on Anderson. So that first down throw. Will total four on the hookup from Dan Nicholson to Justin Anderson. Let's call it second and six. That line to make is down at the eight yard line. Now motion from David Kornikevich. This is Span. Span will duck through a tackle inside the 10 down to the nine yard line. Chad Span. True freshman. Well, Doug, you know that feeling. True freshman. How excited are you when you get a chance to uh, run at that number two tail? Oh, there's, there's no better feeling. I'm sure Mr. Spann did not expect to get this much playing time this early in the season. But with injuries, he's definitely seen a lot of playing time. I'm sure he's fired up. That's going to bring up third and one. Justin Anderson, the 215-pound third-year sophomore back on the football field. Motion from Kornikevich. Anderson on the carry first down is a lower that shoulder down near the six yard line needed one got three drive stays alive for Northern Illinois drive stays alive this is what we talked about in the beginning of the game being husky tough it's not going to always be 10 and 12 yard runs sometimes the offensive line is going to have to come off when the defense knows they're running the ball eight to nine guys in the box do what they just did make tough short yardage runs to keep drives alive pick up first downs 
Well, that guard, Tim Mayer, book, the uh, Mayer Bach, rather, the uh, third year sophomore, 312 pounder, plays on uh, the left side of Eddie Adamski. And again, Joe Novak has been very pleased with the progression of his offensive line. Justin Anderson battles his way down to the one yard line, following the blocks of Eddie Adamski, the center, and Jason Anye Buaga, who wears number 65, the sophomore right guard. Anderson already, Doug Chapman, with 11 first quarter carries. 11 carries. I believe they're approaching the century mark for rushing on the ground right now. And you can see the big fellas has come off tackle, and they're called what, you, what, you, what coaches like to see. They're moving the line of scrimmage towards the end zone. This is a statement drive right now for NIU. They've been banged up at the tight end spot, but that's motion from Brandon Davis. Give the football to Justin Anderson. Near the goal line, in the end zone. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. Touchdown, that's, that's what I'm sure Coach no backing company wanted to come out. They wanted to establish the running game. Do what we do, go back to our bread and butter. Let's not get too fancy. Let's oppose our will on opposing team's defense and make them stop us. And they haven't done it. Eastern Michigan has not found a way to slow that running game down thus far. That's a 92-yard drive in 14 plays, and most of it on the ground that took almost six minutes it's off the clock late in the first quarter. Uh, Chris Mendek, who's already delivered that 45-yard field goal on to add the PAT. That is an, an impressive football drive and give a lot of credit to the offensive line, Doug Chapman. You gotta give a you have to give a lot of credit to those big monsters up front. Those guys are the guys that move the ball and they help things like this happen. Touchdowns. Oh, that's pretty funny, right? My face plan with a razor, unlimited data add-on and a pearl, and a family time plan with two Samsung T629s. Wow. Yeah. How did you do that? Yeah. I'm a matchmaker. Looking for a mobile match? Look no further than Mobile One, a T-Mobile exclusive dealer. No matter the phone, price, or plan, we know exactly what you need. Stop in today and match up with the all-new Moto Riser. Mobile One, we're not heroes, just matchmakers. Wow. Call 1-800-NEW-2-MOBILE or surf by MyMobileOne.com. Where do diehard Mac fans go for the latest in Mac news and information? Mac-Sports.com, the official website of the Mid-American Conference. That's Mac-Sports.com for news, notes, stats, standings, and contests. Read headlines from across the country in the Mac beat. Want to know what's on the air? Mac-Sports.com is your source for the latest Mac TV and radio schedules and links. You can even watch highlights and listen to coaches talk in the Mac multimedia section. Bookmark it today. Mac-Sports.com. For complete car care, it's CarX, where now our full-service oil change comes with two free wiper blades. And our full-service oil change is now just $27.99, including the free wiper blades. Don't worry, call the CarX man. If you've ever lost your phone, you know that the worst part is losing what's inside of it. It's your whole world of names and numbers. Friends, family, work. Lose your phone and you're lost. At US Cellular, we understand. That's why we offer our contact backup feature, so you'll never lose your names or numbers, even if you lose your phone. We'll get your world back in your hands in no time. U.S. Cellular is wireless where you matter most. U.S. Cellular connects with you. For complete car care, it's CarX, where our lifetime brakes come with a free oil change. Lifetime brakes for $79.95, and that's $79.95 installed, plus a free CarX oil change. Don't worry, call the CarX man. A Northern Illinois with a 10 first quarter points finishing drives uh, yes with an exclamation point Justin Anderson in the end zone but if you're a wide receiver in this football program and we've given you the litany of outstanding ground gainers you have got the block in the run game they've been doing that today you know, if a kid wants to play big time college football and he's a wide receiver he must understand it's not about running the routes and just catching the ball in order to make your offense go you have to be able to block and as you saw a lot of the drives the receivers were doing what I call turning your butt to the hole and that gives the running back a natural alley. Instead of putting your man in the hole, we can fall off and make a play. You don't have to pancake your guy. If you can just position yourself, put your back to the hole, it's not, it's not may not be pretty every time, but it creates a natural seam for your running back to get a field. And every receiver knows the better a running back can run the ball, the more one-on-one -on -one coverage you will get as a receiver, and you will get bigger plays with lead to touchdown. Brent Davis with a couple of nice blocks on the, on the runs of... Julian and Justin Anderson, along with Marcus Lewis. Right, this is Dante Gage for the five-yard line. 
Dontao Gage with a strong return up to the 30 yard line. He went for 90 yards to the house last week. Where's number two? And you know what? When Northern Illinois visited Eastern Michigan the final game of last year, they were so beat up at the quarterback spot. That young man, number two, Dontao Gage, Doug Chapman, played quarterback for Eastern Michigan and Jeff Jennick because that's what they were down to and did a pretty nice job from a kick return guy, wide receiver, playing quarterback the final game of the year. Very good athlete. See what Andy Schmidt gets now. Schmidt's going to put it up off play action. Seam route. It was right there, but it was dropped by DeAnthony White. Andy Schmidt and DeAnthony White hooked up on a 67-yard touchdown pitch and catch. That football's got to be caught by the young man from Georgia. That's a catchable ball. If I'm Schmidt right now, I'm not riling, I'm not riling my guy, but I'm telling him we got to make those catches. We're down 10. We're on the road. We're 0-2. We've got to get something going. And plays like that are what you call drive killers. Eastern Michigan got beat in their opener 27 to 3, but Jeff Jennick told us they had a couple of sustained drives and were down in that red zone. Now Schmidt will fire that out right. And uh, it is caught. But that hit came uh, right away as uh, Schmidt's throw was caught by Tyler Jones. And Jones is a backup quarterback who has seen time in the past game as a receiver. And that's a great play by Jones. You see, he squats on the route, which means he's not concerned about the receiver going deep. When a cornerback can squat on routes, it makes it very difficult to convert those short passes into big plays. Because as soon as the guy catches the ball, the cornerback is able to come up, either jar the ball loose or pick the ball off and go the opposite direction. Great play by him on that play. Keep an eye on Tyler Jones. He's the backup quarterback of this football team, and they got to get him on the football field to make plays. Third and seven. Might have had motion. Free play for Schmidt. And uh, that throw to the uh, the sideline is uh, too tall for Travis Lewis, but we might have had uh, encroachment on uh, Larry English, that uh, that Bronco Nagurski, a watch list defensive end for Northern Illinois. Larry May got a little anxious on that last one. I saw a little movement in the line. Well, in our conversations. Nine. Offside defense. Penalty is five yards from the previous spot. Play third down. They actually got Josh Allen, the uh, the outside linebacker, who got in that neutral zone. But uh, now Larry English, who said Bronco Nagurski, uh, watch list for his work on that defensive end spot, but you know has not been 100 percent healthy. Third down and two now. The line to make is the 40 yard line. This is Andy Schmidt on that roll right. Better keep the football. Schmidt with a dive and got to those first down sticks. Well, Andy Schmidt was able to beat that tackle attempt of Corey Hansen and stretching out to keep this drive alive for Eastern Michigan. Those are plays they have to make. You have to understand this is a kid that's coming off of serious throwing shoulder surgery. So to make plays like that shows he's not playing tentative. He's not scared to put his head down. And those are the plays that hopefully will get some juice in this offense and wake them up a little bit and help them make some more plays. Well, Jeff Jennick very hopeful of that. And this offense averaging just 200 yards a game in their first two, although they did pick it up against Ball State a little bit. And this first down carry is going to go to Pierre Walker. Walker bouncing off that stack as he bangs forward for about three. Doug Chapman, you just mentioned Andy Schmidt and not being able to participate in spring drills because of the shoulder surgery. Quarterback can't start throwing until uh, late August as we look at Pierre Walker. Boy, how, how does that affect him coming into a football season? Timing, rhythm, what have you? It definitely affects you. Even if you're quote unquote on the, the doctor's clear you're being healed, you still have a lot of scar tissue in that shoulder. And it affects your, your arm strength, especially your deep downfield throws. And it, it, it affects your zip on the ball. Well, English was coming with pressure. What did you see, Larry English? number 51 he was shot out of the proverbial cannon there as he beat that block and uh, made Schmidt hurry it as we've got a flag on the play look at English as you can see the tackle comes out just a little bit too late even that color that flash of color can cause a quarterback to make a, a throw a lot faster than he wanted to you can see Schmidt right there was very uncomfortable he saw the color, got rid of the ball. personal foul on the offense number 60 late hit 15 yards from the previous spot Third down. Well, that's starting left guard, Andy Fretz, the 290-pound sophomore out of Kalamazoo, got hit for that uh, that dead ball foul, the late hit. 
just seems to be they have a little bit of inconsistency on offense. They'll make a good pass, then they'll get a run for negative yardage, they'll throw up, have a drop ball. They need to be more consistent on offense, East Michigan does, to keep these drives going, to sustain a drive to answer these 10 points NIU has put on the board. And these are drive killers. The line to make is at the midfield stripe, third and 22. Now that inside handoff off the delay, the tailback Dwayne Priest, the young man from Roanoke, Virginia, who uh, prepped at uh, Fort Union Military Academy, and uh, Priest only got a couple, and it's going to force Eastern Michigan to punt the football for the third time here in this opening quarter. There's not many plays for third and 22 in offensive playbook, <laughs> and a lot of times third down is your big draw and screen down. And with the, with the lack of success they've had throwing the ball downfield, if you're Northern Illinois, you know a draw screen was just now coming. They snipped it out, and played it great. All right, Zach Johnson will hit this from uh, about the 20-yard line. Greg Turner awaiting, but uh, that will come as the first play of the second quarter as we are at triple zeros. The first 15 minutes of football complete on this absolutely gorgeous Saturday afternoon in the land of the Huskies. Northern Illinois with a 10-0 advantage. Rosanna Olson, Farmer's Insurance agent. Yes. Singing telegram from Scott Berger. He says, you and Hell Point really saved me after my car accident, thanks. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. You ready for the singing part? Sure. <laughs> And the amazing thing is you can stay any hotel anywhere using your points. Last year, we went to Trinidad and Tobago. All on points. My uncle was eaten by an alligator on a trip to Africa, but we used our points. So in the end, it wasn't a half bad trip. This year, we're thinking about going I remember one time I fell asleep in a tanning bed. Ugh, how embarrassing, huh? I didn't do a tanning bed. Why are you asking that? Why do you have goggle lines? What did you just say to me? <laughs> No other weekly financial publication moves the markets like Barron's. It provides the knowledge, insight, and foresight that allow you to stay one step ahead. Subscribe now and you'll also receive Barron's Online with its daily columns, market analysis, and tools like the Stock Screener and the Stock Grader. Get 13 weeks of Barron's and Barron's Online all for only $39. Call now, toll free, 800-334-6600. That's 800-334-6600. A shift has been made. Now power isn't sacrificed to achieve fuel efficiency. And cars that perform great on the road also perform great at the pump. Introducing the 33 mile per gallon Nissan Versa, 33 mile per gallon Sentra, 32 mile per gallon Altima. Three powerful Nissan sedans with 32 miles per gallon or higher, starting at just 12,630. Now, when you think power and fuel efficiency, think Nissan. Whatever the season, when a storm gathers, so do we. The State Farm Catastrophe Team, a full-time force of 2,500 people whose only mission is to be there in times of crisis, working with local State Farm agents to bring help and hope to more people than any other company. And we'll be there for you, too. Tom Waddle, direct from the NFL Network Studios, Sunday night at 10. The final word. Northern Illinois with this 10 0 advantage as we get set to start the second quarter. And a look at the beautiful new uh, Jordan Center that houses now Joe Novak and his Northern Illinois uh, football program. With his first 15 minutes, with no question about uh, what the mantra of Northern Illinois has been. Go back to being Husky tough, running the football, as uh, we discussed, Doug Chapman, and it's come up aces for him in uh, this first 15 minutes. Greg Turner awaiting uh, the boot of Zach Johnson. This one will not turn over as well for Johnson, and it's going to be down around the 35-yard uh, the line as uh, that's where the Northern Illinois offense will start. Delighted you're with us on this great football Saturday. Michael Regai with former Marshall running back Doug Chapman. Now he's used to carrying it 25, 30 times a game. How about Justin Anderson? Anderson in his first career start with 12 first quarter carries. That's being Husky tough and running the football if you're Northern Illinois. That's definitely being Husky tough. And that 
that shows that the offensive line is dedicated to opening up holes for this guy. As he comes through, he's running tough. He's not getting touched until he gets into the secondary. Offensive line is getting up what you call the next level, making blocks on linebackers, getting guys what they call on the ground, get clearing the hole out, and it's making it a great day for a great first quarter for Justin Anderson. Yeah, he saw the three-yard touchdown run that culminated that 92-yard drive. Now, this is Dan Nicholson with time. Nicholson's throw is caught in a crowd by Britt Davis for a very short gain, so Davis with his second catch. And again, you know that Joe Novak uh, all week long was said, we're going to run the football and go back to doing the things that they've done best here, eight consecutive years of 1,000-yard ground game. Running backs love to come and play in this program, don't they, Doug? They definitely do, and it's, it's not easy to have a 1,000-yard back consistently like that. And that just shows how, how great the offensive line has played over the years and have, has done a great job for this program. But it shows how, how dedicated they are to the run, and they've, they've shown that today. Uh, right back to the ground game on second and seven. That's carry number 13 of the afternoon for Justin Anderson. And Anderson, as we mentioned, a young man out of Steinmetz High School. All of you uh, here in the Chicagoland area, very familiar with his high school career. And there it is, the eight straight 1,000-yard seasons going back to William Andrews in 1999. Thomas Hammock, who was on this staff, your very good friend, Michael the Burner Turner, who you played with at San Diego, and of course, the absolutely phenomenal, the little man, Garrett Wolf, who's now with the Chicago Bears. Garrett Wolf, I'd say he's a, he's a very impressive back. Not only did he get the ball a lot, he, he never got hurt. And that right there shows how tough the kid was. Let's go back to William Andrews. It started it all in 1999 with that 1,000 yard season he put together for Joe Novak. Then Thomas Hammock, as you see right here, another guy that Michael Burner Turner, who I played with with the San Diego Chargers, great back. And then it finishes up with the most recent guy they had was Garrett Wolf, maybe the best of them all. And right back to that ground game of Justin Anderson. Almost broke that. He got to the second level before he was finally tripped up by Jacob Wyatt, that strong safety. So Anderson approaching the 100-yard mark on the ground. He's got 82 yards now on uh, his uh, day's work that has already been heavy volume here in the first half. I really like the way he's running. They're not doing anything fancy. He's not dancing around. He's getting the ball, hitting the hole, getting north and south, getting positive yards, breaking arm tackles, and not being brought down until he's in the secondary. I like what I'm seeing from this kid. They got eight more there on second and two. Again, Justin Anderson. Anderson's got a first down before he was uh, finally uh, dragged down. Once again, Daniel Holtzclaw, that tough middle linebacker for Eastern Michigan, in on the hit. But again, this offensive line, Doug, Joe Novak was telling us yesterday that he is absolutely just thrilled. He, he thought it might be a problem. He thought it might be a, 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 an area of concern coming in this year, but they have uh, certainly developed the two games much to his satisfaction. They definitely have. You know, they, they, they have a few new guys up front, a couple sophomores, and I think he was worried about youth and experience, but thus far, they've shown that they they're able to get the job done today against Eastern Michigan. Well, Justin Anderson with a carry again, uh, trying to make Eastern Michigan defenders miss. Josh Hunt got a big pull on him, the, uh, the fourth-year junior out of Jackson Lumen Christie High School, who wears number 91. But I'll tell you what, you, you mentioned use the phrase getting lathered up, and I know you running backs like that. <laughs> Now, not only is Justin Anderson lathered up, he's already dripping with energy from uh, his first half workload. Yeah, he's past the lather in the first. He's foaming right now because he's getting he's getting the ball. I believe he's averaging close to five, six yards a carry right now, and you can't ask for anything more out of that if you're a running back. All right, second down and 11. Nicholson wants to put it up. A lot of time. He'll come underneath. He's got Britt Davis. Davis making defenders miss and finally rocked to the ground, but he's inside the 30, down close to the 27-yard line. Uh, Joe Novak, it's all about running the football. How paramount is it for this Northern Illinois program? You'll find out from the head coach. Out what these kids can do. You know, sometimes a youngster looks real good on Tuesday and Wednesday. On Saturday, he doesn't do much. Other kids, they're maybe not quite as good during the week, but they like to play better on Saturday. So, till they get in there and see, you don't know. But, uh, like I said, I feel confident that we'll be adequate back there. I think, like I mentioned at the beginning of the year, I just think we've been spoiled here with 17, 1800 yard rushers. We're obviously not going to have that. I'm not sure he, he was expecting Anderson to have to take this much of the load this early with injuries to their starting tailback. 
but you, with the way that they're blocking up front, the way Anderson is running the ball, I wouldn't be surprised if he rush, rushes for over 12, 1,300 yards this season. Well, he's tough. He's 250 pounds, durable. As uh, you just look at him with the first down, Andre Hatchett on that stop for Eastern Michigan on that third and one. Anderson got a couple of more. Well, Justin Anderson now with 17 carries for 87 yards and well, Northern Illinois on the march again at the 11 minute mark here in the second quarter. Well, Justin Anderson this time got dragged down from behind by Josh Hunt. Well Josh Hunt got off that block and again from Jackson Lumen Christie High School close to a 300 pounder and he took Anderson down for no gain. That's Josh Hunt's second big play he's made in the backfield this drive and I'm sure if you're Eastern Michigan right now you've got to be saying to yourself we have to do something on defense to stop the ball. A guy that's been very quiet today number 83 Jason Jones has been very disruptive thus far this season. Haven't heard much from him today. I'm looking for him to make a few plays. Oh, you're right, Doug. Coach is just raving about Jason Jones, and that includes Joe Novak at second and 11. How to set up that wide receiver screen. This is Britt Davis on the catch. But how about the job from Eastern Michigan secondary? Corey Riley, that uh, backup defensive end, forced that back inside, and Holtzclaw on the hit. That's a great job. Great play by Eastern Michigan. Sniff it out. And they tell you as a receiver, when you catch that screen, you don't want to bring it back in too, too far because there's a lot of defensive shirts floating around and what happened was he was forced to bring it back in the corner squatted on it he had nowhere to go but back to what they call the teeth of the defense and they swallowed him right up well, Britt Davis with his fifth reception of the afternoon total 30 yards on it but this is a big third and 14 for Eastern Michigan's defense line to make down at the 16 yard line and Nicholson wants to go upstairs Nicholson with time and his throw is too tall for Britt Davis as Davis ran that uh, that deep square out and uh, Nicholson threw into double coverage there. You can see right here he drops back. They're, 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 drop, they're dropping the linebackers. They're playing cover two shell over the top. The safety is just backing up. Great coverage. He actually was triple cover. Safety's over the top and there was nowhere for him to throw that ball but where he put it and now they're putting their best guy that scores most consistently on the field right now. Chris Nendek out of the hole to Greg Turner. This will come from 47 yards. Did he get enough? Well, great, an outstanding leg of Chris Nendek as he is straight and true again from 47 yards away. Oh, he's hit from 45. He's hit from 47. And Northern Illinois on three possessions has put 13 on the board and have the lead. In my younger days, I made lots of mistakes. I hung out with the wrong people. Got into some bad habits. I neglected my relationships. The drinking was the worst. Now more, I take better care of myself. Things are looking up. Kaiser Permanente. Thrive. Where do diehard Mac fans go for the latest in Mac news and information? Mac-Sports.com, the official website of the Mid-American Conference. That's Mac-Sports.com for news, notes, stats, standings, and contests. Read headlines from across the country in the Mac beat. Want to know what's on the air? Mac-Sports.com is your source for the latest Mac TV and radio schedules and links. You can even watch highlights and listen to coaches talk in the Mac multimedia section. Bookmark it today. Mac-Sports.com. Why all of this suffering? If you did not know suffering, you would not know happiness. Just want to watch the game. There is a peaceful solution. You mean like Comcast? Correct. Who orders a dish in the city of wind? Comcast Digital Cable with On Demand and HBO. Just $29.99 per month for six months. Are you enlightened? Call 1-888-4-BEST-TV. All Schlag and Dexter Lux sets are on sale at Menards. Choose from handle sets, knobs, levers, and deadbolts in a variety of styles and finishes. Choose from over 200 different lock sets. A Dexter Torino Passage lock set with a polished brass finish is $9.99. A Schlag Georgian style entry lock set in a satin nickel finish is $21.88. A Flair Privacy Lever with aged bronze finish is $24.88. Plus, there are zero payments and no interest till summer when you use your big card. Save big money at Menards. 
The Mac Game of the Week from ESPN Plus kicks off Saturday, September 22nd at noon Eastern when the Temple Owls fly to Ohio to take on the Falcons of Bowling Green. Oh, the golden flashes of Kent State head north to take on the Akron Zips. Check your local listings to catch the Mac Game of the Week. It's Temple against Bowling Green or Kent State meets Akron on Saturday, September 22nd at noon Eastern only from ESPN Plus. Take a look at our GMAC Financial uh, Services uh, Max Standings. Let's hone in on the West Division side of things. Central Michigan with that uh, huge explosion in the win over Toledo up in Mount Pleasant last week, along with Ball State to beat Eastern Michigan. The two squads that have put the W's in the uh, in the uh, the column here. And of course, if you're Eastern Michigan and Northern Illinois, that's why we said somebody got to get off to Schneid here. Both of them all at two and uh, East. Well, the only undefeated team in the MAC right now, although yet to play a conference game. Frank. Solich and his Ohio Bobcats with a couple of uh, non-conference wins. Buffalo with a win over Temple and uh, Miami with a win over Ball State uh, back in the opener of the season with the two Mac wins on the east side. And that's how things look uh, going into week three and for Jeff Jenick well, it's about uh, changing the culture and uh, changing the, the atmosphere around this Eastern Michigan program and Jenick has uh, had some success. Although it uh, dipped to 1 and 11 last year for the Eagles as they try to rebound from that. And Nendek is going to drive uh, Dwayne Priest all the way back about six yards deep in the end zone. And well, there have been very few kickoffs that have been non returnable this year, Doug Chapman, uh, with the, uh, the kickoffs being moved to the 30 yard line this year. But Nendek with that superior leg. Great leg by him. That's a big weapon if you have a kicker that can kick the ball that well and consistently make the offense start at their 20 and give them no chance for a return. That's as big as a weapon as having a great defense. At Chaber Cobbers type Saturday is a UC close to 24,000 on a high school band day here in Husky Stadium. Now Andy Schmidt going back to work and he'll fire that strike on the quick slam and he's got that whip it quick wide out DeAnthony White. And White uh, with uh, that first down catch as a Schmidt right on time on that quick post. I think right now they've realized they cannot move the ball on the ground. They have to buckle down. Schmidt has to make pinpoint passes, and these receivers have to catch the ball when they hit him in the hands. I go back to the run game on that first out call, but you see that left side of that Northern Illinois defensive line, Brandon Bice and uh, Alec uh, Crutch. Craig Rush closing down on a Pierre Walker as Walker was uh, able to get maybe one. Give Walker one and call it second down and uh, nine. As you get a good look at Corey Hansen, who wears number 26. But yeah, this Northern Illinois defensive front seven tough against the run. Let's call it second to ten now with the four wide receivers for Andy Schmidt out of the shotgun. Now Schmidt off that waggle left, going to keep the football. Well, Andy Schmidt will lower that shallow shoulder out over the 40-yard line. So Schmidt uh, got about seven as he kept the football. At 230 pounds, uh, Doug, this young man not afraid to lower the shoulder and deliver a hit. He's not afraid. And you can see this is a design rollout play. But as you can see, he has two red jerseys upfield, so he cuts back inside of his, of his tackle, which is a great move. And like I said, this is a guy coming off of serious shoulder surgery. So for him to be able to run the ball and be comfortable putting his shoulder down in traffic, that shows that he's not having Ill, any side effects from the shoulder injury. All right, the line to make is at the 43-yard line. Let's call it third and a long one. Easter needs this, trailing by 13. Give the football to Pierre Walker. Trying to struggle to get to those sticks, and I don't know. I don't know. This uh, Northern Illinois defensive front uh, just pretty much walled off everything. They gave him that uh, that progress up over the uh, the 43 to the 44, and that's a first down for Jeff Jenick and uh, his offense. It's a very, very generous spot if you ask me. I'm not sure. Oh, come on. You're a running back. You love those uh, those right foot spots. Oh, I, uh, I'm, definitely, I'm definitely all for the, the generous spot. But that was a very, very generous spot on that last one. And it garters the first down for Pierre Walker, so it'll keep the drive alive as tight end Ken Bonet in motion. Off that waggle right. Schmidt with a lot of time. His throw is caught by Josh Leduc, but out of bounds. 
as uh, Schmidt and a force Leduc into the sidelines and that'll fall incomplete. A great design play. I just think he put a little bit too much air underneath the ball. The guy was open. He was open before Schmidt even saw him, but he just let the ball hang a little bit. He boots out, has a nice time, sees the field well, just puts a little too much air and, and puts the ball off the field of play. I had a coach once tell me, never in the history of the game has a play been completed out of bounds. And you played with Randy Moss. Yes, I did. And Marshall. <laughs> and the I freak did. could go get him, couldn't he? He could go get most of them. Yes, he could. <laughs> a big one against uh, the New York Jets last week. Now Schmidt with time and his throw. It had Travis Lewis. But Lewis, the Eastern Michigan basketball player as well as wide receiver, wasn't able to haul that in. There's big play opportunities that they need. These are big plays opportunities. I believe the third catchable ball that has been dropped by wide receivers on third down, on second and third down when they need it. It let up a little bit. Looked like he was running with his hands out, didn't really run to the ball. But those are plays they have to tighten down. It seems like right now that the passing game, they, they're, they're, they're putting guys in position. It's the small thing is putting the ball on the receiver, receiver making the catch. They're not doing the small things right now. Well, let's check that. That was uh, Tyler Jones, that backup quarterback that wasn't able to haul that in. Third and ten now. Rush coming from English, and Schmidt is going to go down. Well, Larry English forced that back inside, and English did got some help from his defensive mates, uh, the 265 junior, Alex Crutch. That pocket closed down in a hurry. You see English gets great upfield penetration, makes the quarterback uncomfortable, makes him step up in the pocket. Once again, they're in a third and long situation where they have to pass, and this is just great, great, great penetration by the Northern Illinois defense. Uh, Crutch and uh, Brandon Bice combined to make that stop. So it's going to bring up fourth at 10 now. And again, Zach Johnson to uh, boot it away. Greg Turner will stand at his 15 and waving everybody out of there. Although Johnson's going to get a very fine roll down inside the five at football, still with momentum down to the two yard line. That is a, a boot of 54 yards for Zach Johnson. Eastern Michigan with a 13-0 lead in the football when we get back. Why do you always get the front seat? Because I have a higher education. Well, you I mean, took honors classes. In high school. Hey, it's Bobby Bowden. I'm going to touch him. Now would be a good time to have accident forgiveness. I'm still going to touch him. Part of Allstate, your choice auto insurance. Are you in good hands? That wasn't him. Are you still touched him? Cheese. Taco Bell's new cheesy beefy melt. To get seasoned beef, melty, melty, and even more glorious melty cheese, think outside the bun. For complete car care, it's CarX, where now our full service oil change comes with two free wiper blades. And our full service oil change is now just $27.99, including the free wiper blades. Don't worry, call the CarX man. If you've ever lost your phone, you know that the worst part is losing what's inside of it. It's your whole world of names and numbers. Friends, family, work, phone, and you're lost. At U.S. Cellular, we understand. That's why we offer our contact backup feature. So you'll never lose your names or numbers, even if you lose your phone. We'll get back in your hands in no time. U.S. Cellular is wireless where you matter most. U.S. Cellular connects with you. For complete car care, it's CarX, where our lifetime brakes come with a free oil change. Lifetime brakes for $79.95, and that's $79.95 installed, plus a free CarX oil change. Don't worry, call the CarX. Back inside Husky Stadium, this Eastern Michigan offense with uh, offensive coordinator uh, Scott Isfordy. To get things uh, on the right side. They've not been able to put any points on the board, averaging just nine a game in their first two. And 
and uh, looking for some of those explosive plays as we were discussing now as far as explosive goes it's been a, a, a very strong first three possessions for uh, quarterback Dan Nicholson and uh, the Husky offense of Northern Illinois we'll get to that and document that in a moment but they've had three possessions and all of them have culminated in points on the board now for their own two yard line give the football to that backup tailback and uh, let's check that it was Justin Anderson Anderson the 250 pound sophomore out of Steinmetz High School bangs out near the five all right here's our uh, marathon fast stats for you. Uh, you, you three possessions every one of them culminates in putting points on the board uh, a couple of field goal hits from Chris Nendek the Justin Anderson touchdown run Joe Novak liking that from his offense he has to especially that the one that starts on the eight yard line a 14 play 92 yard drive that results in a touchdown those are demoralizing to defenses especially when a team can run the ball as effectively as NIU has been doing now Nicholson will rifle that out and he's got Matt Simon playing pitch and catch with Simon and that's a Northern Illinois first down hey Doug we talked about Dan Nicholson today with his six interceptions in the first two games he hit 15 throws in a row though last week he looks very poised in command and confident today and like you said earlier once again this is a guy that's played in big games he just needs to calm down make smarter throws not try to do too much outside of what he's capable of and right now with the way the running game is going he's very comfortable he's sitting back there the offensive line is doing a great job and he's able to throw safe passes to keep these drives alive uh, Justin Anderson uh, that tailback tried to wiggle free but there's Jason Jones the first time we call him today big number 83 the 270 pound senior already with four tackles for a loss and a sack in the first two games for Easter and you can see right here he gets penetration I spoke with I spoke with coach Jenick earlier in the week and he said earlier in the season there's been times when Jones has seen unblockable he's a very disruptive player NIU has done a great job of neutralizing him thus far but he did a great job getting in the backfield and, and breaking that play up Eastern thinks he's going to be a first day NFL draft guy Justin Anderson tried to fight a crease behind the blocks of Chris Acevedo and Tim uh, Mayerbach that left tackle and left guard got over the 20 or gain a three it's going to bring up a, uh, a second uh, make it a third down let's call it six you see right here Anderson right now this is I believe his 20th carry you know already this far in the first half he takes it off tackle kind of gets brought down a little rough but right now they're trying to just control this clock keep the clock moving with a nice long drive hope to get seven points out of it well Josh Hunt where's number 91 there doing a fine job we've called him now he made four tackles today the 296 pounder empty backfield on third and six for Dan Nicholson on that quick drop he'll gun that in route and it is caught We're gonna be short of the first down so Dan Nicholson finding uh, Justin Anderson who came in that empty look out of the backfield caught eight balls last week for Northern Illinois coming into this game Anderson is there was their leading receiver I think that's a new wrinkle out of the backfield a lot of running backs at this school have not been known for their pass catching ability but Anderson shows the ability right then he was showing him the first down but they can get him out of the backfield motion him, put him out wide that makes him more of a threat than he already is just out of the backfield Boy, a solid stop though from that Eastern Michigan defense as we take a look at the Nate Beard Beard is set ready to return this kick about the 35 yard line and Andy Dittbenner really got it to turn over he'll drive Beard back to the 25 and that special teamwork of Northern Illinois solid as uh, Saul Abera backup linebacker the senior on the special teams hit Eastern Michigan with their hands on the football trailing by 13 when we get back. Pre-Katrina, we have 177 youth football teams. After Katrina, we lost field lights, we lost posts, we lost facility roofs.
the teams representing the two conferences that dominate Midwest college football. We have the united backing of the world's most important manufacturing industry. We have a national television audience on the premier sports network. We have the newest, best football stadium in America. Motor City Bowl 11, football in Detroit. During the holidays, you want to be there. When it comes to value, look to the new AT&T. Well, that's true. Those introductory rates from cable can be misleading. Right. Once their short promo rates are over, the real price can be a shock. Get up to $200 cash back when you sign up for all four from AT&T. Comcast can't beat AT&T's lowest bundle price for TV, broadband, and home phone. Guaranteed. No introductory pricing, no gimmicks. From AT&T, wireless, broadband, home phone, and TV. The new AT&T. Your world delivered. Whatever the season gathers, so do we. Mission is to be there in times of crisis, working with local State Farm agents to bring help and hope to more people than. And we'll be there for you too. Absolutely delighted you're a part of it with us uh, from Northern Illinois University today, right here on ESPN Plus, Northern Illinois, off that very disappointing fourth quarter loss last Saturday here at home. The 13 0 lead, Eastern Michigan, with just 47 yards of total offense here this afternoon, averaging right at 200 per game. So let's see what Jeff Jennick's offense with. Andy Schmidt, the uh, sophomore quarterback from St. John's, Michigan, at the throttle, gets here. They'll go with three wide. Motion now from tight end Ken Bonet. As this drive starts from the 33-yard line. Now this is Pierre Walker, and Walker had a little bit of a crease before uh, he was finally leveled. Let's check that. Now Dwayne Priest is in at the tailback spot. He wears number 22. Uh, Priest is the 185-pound true freshman out of Fort Union Military Academy. He's trying to change things up a little bit as Jeff Jennings. Yeah, Jeff Jennings told me earlier in the week, Priest is more of an elusive, quicker, game-breaking type back, and he wanted to see what he could do this weekend against the NIU defense. Yeah, uh, Jennick very high on him. He got six at first down. Set up the screen for Dwayne Priest, and he's got a block. This is Dwayne Priest out near the midfield stripe. That's seven more, so a couple of touches for Priest. He accumulates a quick 13 yards and an Eastern first down. And it seems like sometimes these are the type of plays that offensive need, offenses need to get that shot in the arm. They haven't been able to get anything going, get someone in there making some big plays. Like I said before, they've only had one play this year coming into this game of 20 plus yards so they need big plays hopefully priest can provide some explosion on offense for them that's why did we discuss their need for explosive plays now smith will fire the out and is caught it is caught over there on uh, that uh, that far sideline by travis lewis lewis who doubles as a basketball starter on the eagles hoop squad as well we got a flag though and uh, we'll give a listen to a game referee today, Stan Evans, but uh, that is going to be uh, an illegal shift on Eastern Michigan that's going to negate that throw to uh, Lewis. The illegal shift on the offense. Two men moving without resetting prior to snap. Five yards from the previous spot. Replay first snap. The little things, huh, Doug Chapman? Little things. And that, that might be some due to some of the youth on offense for Eastern Michigan. They have a few young guys, a few redshirt freshmen, true, true sophomores out there. And sometimes when you don't have a lot of game experience, things like false starts, two men in motion, or, uh, little things like that can definitely happen on offense. And that's going to cost them and uh, back it up to first and 15. Schmidt will rifle that throw, and it's caught by DeAnthony White. Uh, we like the looks of uh, DeAnthony White, this 170-pound sophomore, as he was able to. Uh, let's check it. It's Ja'Cory Stone who wears number 15 on the grab. White number 18, Stone number 15, hauling in that throw. Good grab by Stone, but good, great. I like the throw by Schmidt. You can see Stone kind of didn't want to come in there on that slant, but Schmidt threw the ball where he wanted the receiver to be. Receiver goes and gets it. 
Great Second pitch. to three now. Schmidt's going right back to work with time, and that throw was behind DeAnthony White. As he had him, uh, Doug, trying to settle down uh, in the middle of that Northern Illinois zone. I think Schmidt's getting a little excited right now. He's coming out. He made a big throw just then. They're moving the ball finally. Right then, he had a guy that sat down in the zone, found the soft spot. He just put the ball behind him a little bit. That's going to bring up a big third down, and if you're Eastern Michigan coming into today, Doug, just 23 percent proficiency at uh, at completing third downs. It's six of 26 coming into today, and here's a big one. This is a huge one. They have to convert on this and keep this drive going. They are three for six on the afternoon as Schmidt with time. Now that pocket closed down, and down he goes. Boy, that pressure came again from at Northern Illinois. Uh, Phil Brown, that backup linebacker, the 222-pound sophomore, wears number 52, got to Schmidt. It looks like on third down, NIU just pins their ears back. Larry, yeah, English, English, you can see English right here. He comes off the edge. He makes the quarterback back into forces him back into the pocket, makes him pull the ball down. And the thing is. Front seven pressure are defensive backs best friend. They don't have to cover as long and it keeps the receiver the quarterback from looking downfield and being able to have a proper view of the field to see who is and isn't open. That third down opportunity not successful for Andy Schmidt in Eastern Michigan and now with just 44 seconds left in this first half Jeff Jennick is uh, going to talk to his offense and he's going to go for it on fourth down. Trailing 13 nothing here as we close down uh, this first half. I want to have you uh, make sure you stick around uh, coming up at halftime here out of Husky Stadium on ESPN Plus. Our halftime report uh, consists of uh, you uh, getting a real look see at uh, some of the top high school defensive end performers around uh, the high school landscape this year. This new Jordan Center that houses uh, Northern Illinois football is a dazzler and we'll take you on a tour of that. We'll give you the first half numbers and all the uh, pictures too. And Everything that uh, you need to get up to speed around uh, the Mid-American Conference. All that coming up at halftime on our ESPN Plus halftime report. Big play now, fourth and two for Andy Schmidt. Line to make down near the 40. Schmidt off play action. Trying to come back to his tight end, Ken Bonet, who made an outstanding grab in traffic. And that is good enough for an Eastern Michigan first down. How about the coverage from Corey Hansen? Bonet, the former quarterback, with a tremendous catch. That's a huge play by Bonet. And this right here is what you have to have out of your team. This is gut check. It's fourth down. They went for it. The coach believed in him. And this is one of those balls either, either player could have caught, the defender or Bonet. Bonet went up, wrestled the guy down for it, got the ball into his possession, and got the first down. Great play. Now that clock will move as we approach 30 seconds. Schmidt will stand tall. He's going to air it out for the end zone. And it is caught at the one-yard line by DeAnthony White. You can see right now, Eastern Michigan sidelines, everybody's standing up, no one's sitting down. Everyone's kind of pumped up right now. This is the first time they've, able, they've been able to move the ball substantially in NIU's territory the entire game. Football at the one-yard line, that clock moving now for Andy Schmidt after that 39-yard reception. Give the football to the tailback and into the end zone is Pierre Walker. Touchdown, Determined. Eastern Michigan. Determined run by Pierre Walker right there. He gets the ball. He would not be denied. He puts his shoulder down and runs through two defenders right there. Well, how big of a drive is that? Look at DeAnthony White. We said he's a big playmaker, this young uh, sophomore out of Georgia. And that's a big one, Doug, of 39 yards. That was a big catch, but I'm not sure if he might have, that one might have hit the ground a little bit. He, they, they, they got a little lucky on that one because you can see, actually, they were smart. Schmidt got them to the line of scrimmage and ran that play, which resulted in a touchdown before the coaches from NIU had a chance to dispute that play. Now, Sean Dutcher, they had the point after touchdown out of the hole to Zach Johnson. And Eastern Michigan's offense with just their second touchdown of the season here in game number three coming to life. An eight-play, 68-yard drive. That took the, uh, the Eagles two minutes and 49 seconds to get in the end zone. And 
Let's go back again. Now, did DeAnthony White pull this football in without it uh, hitting this uh, this turf at the two yard line? As a referee, what they're gonna if they were to look at that, what they would say is, did he have possession when the ball hit the ground? If he did, they'll give him the catch. But if the ball came off the ground back into his possession, they wouldn't give him the catch. They were Eastern Michigan was very very smart by hurrying to the line of scrimmage and getting the playoff where whether he caught it or not, it did it was irrelevant because. The second player is also in a touchdown. Northern Illinois didn't get a chance to, to review the play, and it's water under the bridge now. Although, on, uh, with the first down, the uh, sticks being moved on that big play, the clock was stopped. The officials had uh, stopped it to reset the sticks. Well, Jeff Jennick feeling real good about that at the end of this first half as well, Andy Schmidt picking it up on that drive with a big 39-yard hit to DeAnthony White. And they hooked up for a 65-yard touchdown pitch and catch last week, so it's obvious that Schmidt and White now starting to develop some of that big play feel for Eastern Michigan in, in combination. Schmidt and White have to. Every offense has to have your go-to guys at certain positions, and a receiver, a quarterback has to have his go-to receiver. And right now, if they can get that chemistry going you know it's, it's week three they lost the first two they can put those behind them they can build on that as they enter their the meat of their max schedule well, this big crowd uh, here at husky stadium uh, a little bit stunned as uh, this was a, a first what first 29 minutes it was being dominated by northern illinois until uh, eastern michigan puts that very strong drive together that gets them in the end zone and cuts their deficit down to just six now at 13 7. and i tell you one thing michael if you look at the stats you, know, you would think northern illinois is winning this game by three or four touchdowns but actually with the, the way eastern michigan has been stifled on offense and the way northern illinois has been able to run the ball Eastern Michigan is only six points out of this ball game right now. It's a very close ball game. We're going to lay this kick up very, very short, and that football's down on the ground, and that big scramble for it, and Northern Illinois got on it. Why, well, Anthony uh, Antonacci, the backup defensive end, who wears number 49 for the uh, the Huskies of Northern Illinois, one of the up men out of Naperville. He had uh, problems getting that football corral, but Matt Simon, a wide receiver with a good hands, got on it. That could have been disastrous for the Huskies. So we, when I played in college in the pros, that's called a sky kick. And what, the, what you want out of that, you try to get a nice high kick and get one of the up men that's not used to fielding the ball to catch the ball. And you get one of your fast guys, by the time he does field the ball, someone hits him in the mouth, either gives it up or he bobbles it, puts it on the ground just like that. NIU was lucky they fell on that one. But that's a good, that's a good technique right there to try to get the ball back they've got some momentum but the unfortunate thing is if the other team does get the ball they get good field position out of it now with only 21 seconds now left in this first half we'll see what uh, joe novak has in mind he and offensive coordinator roy whitkey uh, we discussed uh, this northern illinois offense with uh, yesterday over here in the jordan center in, in preparation for this one do, do you kneel it down right here michael or? Yeah, for the 31 yard line um, up 13 7 and just being stung by that uh, that big play it, it looks as if that's what Joe Novak's going to do in the victory formation at least the halftime victory formation as Dan Nicholson will take a knee and Northern Illinois will uh, head over to their Gordon Center complex with his 13 7 lead Huskies pretty much, as we said, dominated the first 29 minutes of football until Eastern Michigan put that drive together. And we're going to be chatting with uh, head coach Joe Novak here in just a second as Novak and uh, his football team trying to get in the win column for the, uh, the first time uh, this year with this 13-7 uh, lead. Joe Novak, Michael Regai, and Doug Chapman up here. You said your football team was mad after last week. Joe, you came out and uh, got that ground game going with Justin Anderson. Uh, that's Husky tough football, isn't it? Well, it is. We like that part of it. I sure like touchdowns instead of field goals, but at least we're getting the ball moving on the ground. That's really key to us. Coach, how impressed are you today with the, um, with the play of Justin Anderson? He's come out. He's made a lot of big runs. He's looking tough. He's got a lot of carries in the first half. He's been very impressive with the starting guy going 
down last week. Oh, he's a good player, but we've got to make sure we're getting some breaks in there, too, a little bit. Got to get Spahn in there and get him some carries also. Joe, disappointed uh, with that uh, that last breakdown defensively that allowed Eastern to get on the board? No question about it. I was hoping at least to hold him to a field goal, but we didn't get it done. All right, Joe. Good luck in the okay, second half. Appreciate you. your time. Good luck, Coach. That's Joe Novak, head coach of uh, Northern Illinois as his football team. Uh, again, uh, they win here in this facility in a big-time rate, 35 of the last 44 under Novak. Northern Illinois with a 13-7 lead. It's halftime in DeKalb. I loved that that I was challenged. I loved that I had small classes. I always felt that I could go to my professors and talk about ideas. And to have somebody that uh, you admire and take you seriously, just to me, just sort of opened my eyes. Like, wow, this is this is what college is about. Seven million fans. Thirty-two bowl champions. College bowl games where everybody wins. Brought to you by the Football Bowl Association. Own a timeshare, turn it into cash. Timeshares only got us our full asking price before our next monthly payment was due. Own a campground membership, turn it into cash. Timeshares only sold our campground membership fast and for the price we wanted. Call now and we'll send you absolutely free this information kit, including 10 secrets to buying, selling, and renting timeshares. Timeshares only is the nation's largest, number one most successful timeshare agency. We represent properties from the biggest names in the timeshare industry. When it comes to selling, renting, or buying timeshares, no one comes close to timeshares only. With over $2 billion of timeshares sold in the last six months, now's the perfect time to sell, rent, or buy. And no one sells more timeshares than we do. You owe it to yourself to work with the best. Timeshares only, the most trusted name in timeshares. Call 800-464-3216 to sell, rent, or buy your timeshare and get your free information kit. Don't delay. Call 800-464-3216. She's driving me crazy. She's still mad at me about this purse thing. Yeah, me too. You too what? Well, I'm sorry, what? Are you snurfing? Why would I be snurfing? This is our time on the phone. What's the score of the game? It's tied up. I mean, I think I thought you was tied up. Snurfer. Snurfing, made possible by the Comcast Triple Play. Experience TV, phone, and internet together like never before. It's Comcastic. Bluetooth hands-free link. MP3 connectivity. ELS surround sound. All the luxuries of the modern world. To go. The Acura TL. Acura. Advance. Take advantage of attractive lease rates on the 2008 Acura TL for well-qualified customers. Ever notice how some of those 99-cent fast food deals leave you hungry for more? At Speedway, our new 99-cent hot breakfast and lunch sandwiches are big on taste. From our new ham, bacon, and sausage gravy stuffed biscuit for breakfast to our new grilled honey mustard chicken sandwich for lunch, Speedway always delivers value and variety. And right now, our new hot breakfast and lunch sandwiches are just 99 cents each. You've got my word on it. We're on your way to convenience stores of Speedway. Now spend $5 or more inside the store and get $0.05 cents off per gallon of gas. Halftime here, 30 minutes in the books at uh, Husky Stadium in DeKalb, uh, Eastern uh, Michigan with that late touchdown now as a climb back with it 13-7. Northern Illinois holding the lead. Let's take a look at some of the top defensive end and D-line prospects in the USA as we check in with ESPNU. Welcome to the ESPNU studio. I'm Lowell Galindo with Craig Hubbard from Scouts, Inc. And we're about to look at the defensive end position and tell you some of the top prospects at that position in the nation. First off, though, Craig, how important is this position to college programs? 
It's, it's important at any level, high school, college, the NFL, because these are the guys who can combine that rare blend of size, but also athleticism. They're on the edge. You need to be able, as a defense, create a pass rush without blitzing, and that's where it's going to come from. Your edge rushers, can they get to the quarterback? Can they either sack him or force the quarterback to step up into the pocket towards the defensive tackles? They also need to be able to run sideline to sideline and make plays. So they're, they're important because they're hard to find because they're, they're big and they're fast. They're also physical, but they're athletic. Craig watches a lot of tape, and then he takes that knowledge and puts together the ESPN 150. Here are the top defensive ends in that class. R.J. Washington, number one, he's committed to Oklahoma. Great news for the Fighting Irish because they have two commits in the top ten. Number five, Ethan Johnson, and number six, Darius Fleming. But all you Nebraska fans, fear not, you've got a good one coming your way as well. Josh Williams is the number 11 defensive end in the country. He doesn't have as much experience explosiveness as other guys, not blazing speed. But Craig, how does he make up for that? Well, he's not that type of guy like I said who's going to make him go wow. What he is is just a really good football player. He's not flashy, but he's got a knack for playing the game. You see, he, he was a little late there, but he got his hands down, was able to play off the block. He could hold his ground at the point of attack. He's physical. He reminds me for Nebraska fans a little bit of Jay Moore, who, who graduated last year. Maybe not the most athletic kid, but a good football player. Jamar Jarrett's a kid out of Mission Hills, California. College recruiters know about this kid, but I'm not sure that recruiting fans are giving this kid enough love that they should. About six foot five, he's a great looking prospect physically. You saw him right there, despite being six five, get underneath the offensive blockers' pads and hold his grounds. He's got good feet. He gets out of his stance, takes a good first step. He's physical at the point of attack. He's got all those types of tools. He's a guy that people need to start paying attention to. Chase Thomas playing the ESPNU All American game. He's going to get a chance to show case his skills on a national level that week but I'm telling you about him right now he's a great football player he doesn't have that athleticism that some of the other guys have that jumps out at you like a chance Yagieri or RJ Washington he just knows how to play the game he uses his hands he's not blazing fast but he's fast enough he's an excellent pass rush you see right there come inside use a switch move and get to the quarterback I like all the things he brings to the table Carson Knowlton this one baffles me you know he's not receiving a lot of attention Air Force is offered, Central Arkansas is offered, his coach told me Memphis is very interested. This kid, you know, he lacks elite speed, but you see right there off the edge, he comes with a rip move. He's able to get the body lean and separate and get to the quarterback. He does so many things well on a football field. He's productive. In his week two game, he had seven tackles for a loss. He had five sacks. You know, he's such a good football. He's so productive. I know he's not really fast. I know he's not really big. But I got to know, I got to feel you can find a place for this kid on a football field. He's a football player. Exactly. These are some of the guys that were flying under the radar. Courtney Upshaw certainly does not fit in that category. Everybody knows about this guy. He is the number three defensive end prospect in the nation. Going to Alabama, what is Nick Saban getting with Courtney Upshaw? What they're getting here, and the reason why we're talking about him here is he's a difference maker. He's not just a good defensive end. This kid has a boatload of upside. Last year as a junior was his first year playing. Playing. And what you're seeing is junior year of film. Watch the natural instincts coming off the ball, how he's able to take on blocks, how he's able to locate the ball. He shows the ball skills to make plays like right here. He does things that naturally, you know, most kids can't do. I mean, only one year under his belt of playing football. Now he's entering his second year. He's only going to get better. He has all the role tools. This kid needs to be mentioned with the R.J. Washington, the Chansey Aguirre's. He is that good. He's not just a defensive end. He's an elite defensive end. And that is a scary thought for all those offenses in the SEC, knowing that he's coming to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Let's wrap up this defensive end class as a whole. How good is it from top to bottom? It's really good. It's hard to compare with last year's class because last year's class had 20 guys in the ESC. ESPN 150. That's almost mind-boggling. This year we have eight. Not the elite level guys. You talk about Upshaw, Aguirre, Washington, maybe William Green also at Alabama. After that, there's a bit of a drop-off, but there's really good, solid talent. If I'm a recruiting fan and my school gets somebody one through 50, I'm feeling good about that because the talent is that deep. So maybe not the elite level guys, but really good, solid football players with a lot of different upsides, some bigger kids like a Willie Moby or Ethan Johnson, some really fast type kids, some smart kids like a uh, Westfall. So there's a lot of good players out there, maybe just not 150 type guys. And you can check out all those top players in the ESPN 150. Simply go to ESPNU.com. He's Craig Hobbard. I'm Lowell Galindo.
All right, gentlemen, thank you very much on a uh, band day sun splash Saturday uh, here in uh, Husky Stadium, Northern Illinois with a 13-7 halftime lead. We'll take a look at the new football digs of the Huskies. That's next. The Mid-American Conference salutes Herb Duramity, its all-time winningest coach and most recent inductee into the College Football Hall of Fame. As Central Michigan's head football coach, Duramity compiled a 110-55-10 record, plus three MAC titles and two MAC Coach of the Year honors. He joined such MAC coaching legends as Bo, Woody, and Era, Don James and Dwight Perry, plus star players Mel Long, Bob Babich, and Don Nealon. The MAC salutes its College Football Hall of Fame enshrinees and looks forward to continuing its tradition of excellence. And the amazing thing is you can stay any hotel anywhere using your points. Last year, we went to Trinidad and Tobago. All on points. My uncle was eaten by an alligator on a trip to Africa, but we used our points. So in the end, it wasn't a half bad trip. This year, we're thinking about going I remember to one time I fell asleep in a tanning bed. Ugh, oh, how embarrassing, huh? I didn't do a tanning bed. Why are you asking that? Why do you have goggle lines? What did you just say to me? <laughs> I used to tell my kids, work first, play later. My son Joseph really took that to heart. He's taking down the city's biggest crime family. This is the police! But he never imagined he'd come face to face. Of all the places, you gotta come to my place. With his own brother. I'm done with you! Get down! Joaquin Phoenix, Mark Wahlberg, Ava Mendez, and Robert Duvall in the most electrifying thriller of the year. We own the night. Rated R. In theaters everywhere, October 12th. Baxters use their Verizon Wireless Navigator every weekend. And so do their kids. Free to get GPS turn-by-turn -turn directions without limits, they easily find all kinds of places. No one's ever lost, and no one ever finds out. What's going on? Nothing. Because with a Verizon Wireless Premium Plan, unlimited navigation, messaging, access to videos, and more are all included. Sign your family up today, and when you buy this Crazer, you can get three razors free. Verizon Wireless. It's the network. You've never driven anything like it. The Nissan Murano. Seamless acceleration from its Extronic CVT transmission. You've never seen anything like it. SUV versatility. Five star safety. One beautiful package. Lease the Murano for $249 a month or get $1,500 cash back or 1.9% financing. Feel it. See it. Believe it. At your Nissan dealer now. Build a bathroom of your dreams with a Pace Ensemble from Menards. You'll find a style to complement any decor. The two-door Pleasant Hill Vanity is $169. The Elegant Plantation Model is $229. Other sizes are also on sale. Finish your bathroom with a new tub. The Piccadilly Air Massage Tub fills your tub with thousands of therapeutic bubbles streaming from 38 air injectors for a soothing bath experience, only $599. Plus, there are zero payments and no interest till summer with your big card. Save big money at Menards. What do you say we uh, go up close and personal with these beautiful new football digs of the Huskies here in DeKalb? Let's check out the Jordan Center. What's up, Husky fans? This is Mark Ryder, senior safety. Sal Ibera, linebacker, defense. This is a Husky pride right here. About to show you around the Jordan Center. I don't even know how long we've been here, Mark. About a week. Seems, yeah. seems forever, but top of line facility. I'm about to show you around. Here we got the big part of the auditorium. This actually right here, right? This is the defensive side? Defensive side. This is actually where I meet my position as the linebackers. And uh, going back to the about the team, we all have assigned seats. This is different this year. So when you're missing, uh, coaches know right away. Here's the defensive back meeting room. They just, meetings just started. I'm a little late. But uh, I had to do this tour for everyone, give us some support. But let's take a peek, see what the DBs are doing. All the DBs in here, getting ready for some meetings. There's Coach Hauser, DB coach. Two shout outs to all the boys. We got Bradley, Bradley Fruit in the back. Show him your head, Bradley. Show him your head. Come on. Let's get it. Just staying every, every, every time I camp. This guy every year. This is the offensive group throw. They do the warm up here. Get loose before they go into the new weight room, which we're about to see. Take the left, there's a huge weight room. About three times the size of our whole weight room. 
The cool thing is, though, we can get uh, the whole football team in here lifted, and we can get other sports. Done with the weight room. That weight room's awesome, but if you think something's cool, let's go check out that uh, locker room of ours. It's pretty sweet. Come on, follow us. Uh, every player now gets one of these bad boys. You need one of these security cards. You get in, you just flash it in front of the door. It turns green, and in we go. Let's go check out our house. What an upgrade we got, though. Oh, these lockers, the individual lockers are awesome. We got the, the uh, past player donors. Look up the ceiling. Shape of the football. And those lights there are the lights of the football. I think it's pretty neat. You can tell you, it's a prime time locker. It's my locker, the big 2 3. Not MJ or Devin Hester. Sally Bear, baby. Touch your button. Open it up. Those are all my shoes. You need all those cleats? Yeah. This is for practice. This is for lifting. These are the bright and shiny ones for the game time, baby. Prime time, huh? Prime time. Good Bye. easy. Give you a shout up? out. Okay. Oh, hey, there's our, there's our number one friend, Linda Crown. You're the hardest workers. Welcome to the corner room. What do you think of it, Linda? I love it. This place is awesome. What's so much better about it than the other one? It's roomy. We don't have to unlock lockers. We just throw them in those little cubbies. Yeah. Can you give a shout out to your workers or what? Those yeah. guys are working hey hard. Hey guys, we're on TV. Hey. Hey. You got any problems with your helmet, your shoulder pads, shoes? Come She's the best. Come her. Number one in Division One football. Right there. Hey, Linda. Hi. That's right. This is where all the guys come for practice, before games. Sit up here. Put one of these bad boys up and just pick your ankles. A lot of guys do that. Throw that over ankle braces. This is the plunge pool. Gets down to about 55 degrees. It's like an ice tub. That really saves your legs, all the running we have to do during the bubbles. Especially after practice. Here go the academic All-Americans. Thomas Hammock coached us. He's a football player here. See down here we got coach PJ Fleck, academic All-American. Here's our uh, new Husky statue, donated by the George Wilkins family. Our tradition now, hit the Husky dog on the way onto the field. Coming off the field, we hit the dog on the head. Husky pride. Well, it's about that time for you guys to leave, so we'll see you throughout our season at Husky Stadium, so thanks get a lot. out. It's Everything. been real. Peace out. 13-7 at halftime, Northern Illinois with a lead on Eastern Michigan. Both these football teams looking for their first win of the year, and we're pleased to be joined by head coach Jeff Jenick of Eastern Michigan, Jeff Michael Regai, and Doug Chapman. How vital and key was that touchdown drive that Andy Schmidt engineered to end that first half to get you in the locker room only down one TD? That was critical. You know, we played very poorly in the first quarter and really for the first 20 minutes. And to be able to establish a drive and realize that Northern Illinois let us hang around a little bit, Pierre Walker finished that off nice and gave us some momentum into the halftime. Hey, Coach, it seems like you were able to get some things going via the pass on that last drive. Um, you got a few deep passes, and you were able to get a, the quarterback was moving out of the pocket. Do you look to get him out of the pocket, making throws more on the run in the second half, or kind of having him sit back there and, and try to make plays downfield from the pocket? Well, I think that, you know, our pass protection is good from a drop back uh, pass protection uh, perspective. But, you know, we really need to continue to run the ball with Pierre and Dwayne Priest, establish that, and force their safeties to come up so that we can throw it over their head. Jeff, really appreciate your time. Best of luck in the second half. Thanks so much. Thanks. All right, it's Jeff Jennick, head coach of the Eastern Michigan Eagles. All right, don't go away. We'll get to that second half and uh, get back to look at the first half. 13-7 Northern when we get back. This moment brought to them by GMAC. Automotive financing, mortgage, real estate, insurance. The family of GMAC Financial Services. We have
have the teams representing the two conferences that dominate Midwest college football. We have the united backing of the world's most important manufacturing industry. We have a national television audience on the premier sports network. We have the newest, best football stadium in America. Motor City Bowl 11, football in Detroit. During the holidays, you want to be there. He likes sporty. She prefers sensible. He's into convertibles. She's into convenience. He likes to take it with him. She likes to bring it to her. So what do they have in common? They shop with confidence from the dealers in Automart Magazine and Automart.com. In print. Or online. Use the ad code in Automart Magazine. Enter that code on Automart.com. Get color photos and detailed vehicle information. You're just one page. Or one click away from the perfect car. Shop smart. Use Automart. At Dell, we believe the 25 million small businesses in America deserve something more. So we're introducing Dell Vostro, customized systems, services, and expertise designed just for small business. PCs with no trial wear, just the software you want. And they can be powered by Intel Core 2 Duo processors to keep you up and running fast. Plus the reassurance of Dell's new 30-day worry-free guarantee. New Dell Vostro, proof that we believe in small business. for the perfect way to stay in touch? U.S. Cellular can help you keep in touch no matter where you are. With national plans that include unlimited call me minutes, 7 p.m. nights and weekends, and free incoming text messages. Plus, get a free Samsung SEHU520 with MP3 player and Bluetooth technology when you buy one for just $29.95. A U.S. Cellular will make sure you get everything you need and nothing you don't. U.S. Cellular is wireless where you matter most. U.S. Cellular connects with you. Whatever the season, when a storm gathers, so do we. The State Farm Catastrophe Team, a full-time force of 2,500 people whose only mission is to be there in times of crisis, working with local State Farm agents to bring help and hope to more people than any other company. And we'll be there for you, too. West Division battle, good one going on through the first 30 minutes. Northern Illinois on top of Eastern Michigan, 13 to 7. Michael Regai, Doug Chapman. They want to run the football here at Northern Illinois. Justin Anderson at a big 93-yard first half, Doug. That's a big that, that, that's a big plus for this offense. New guy coming in, filling in for the injury they had last week. He's had a great first half, almost to 100 yards. Great first half for him. When the end zone from three yards out, again, the 21 first half carries. Now, Eastern Michigan needed to get on the board, and Andy Schmidt aired it out to De'Anthony White. De'Anthony White hauls in this. This is a kind of controversial play here. We're not sure if he really caught it, but they were able to get to the line of scrimmage quickly and get a playoff before it could be reviewed, and, 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 and nice touchdown run here. Pierre Walker into the end zone. Eastern Michigan needed it. They got it. It's a six-point halftime lead for Northern Illinois. Get the third quarter rolling at you. That's next. On behalf of Eastern Michigan University and the Mid-American Conference, I want to thank you for being part of NCAA football. As coaches and players, we compete to win, but we compete within the rules of the game and we ask that you do the same by being great fans and by demonstrating good sportsmanship. Good sportsmanship epitomizes the competitive experience for all who support college football. Let's make this game memorable and enjoyable experience for everyone. Make it a great day for NCAA football. Thank you and enjoy the game. You are killing me, Birdwood. Hey, take the secret shortcut. I've never heard of the secret shortcut. Because it's a secret ham. Take it. Not bad, Birdwood. You ever taken this trail, Birdwood? Once, including now. Now would be a good time to have accident forgiveness. Not too bad. Or new car replacement. Your choice auto insurance. Only from Allstate. Birdwood. Are you in good hands? The Mid-American Conference salutes Herb Duramity, its all-time winningest coach and most recent inductee into the College Football Hall of Fame. As Central Michigan's head football coach, Duramity compiled a 110, 55, and 10 record, plus three MAC titles and two MAC Coach of the Year honors. He joined such MAC coaching legends as Bo, Woody, and Era, Don James, and Dwight Perry, plus star players Mel Long, Bob Babich, and Don Nealon. The MAC salutes its College Football Hall of Fame enshrinees and looks forward to continuing its tradition of excellence. Oh, that's pretty funny, right? My face plan with a razor, unlimited data add-on and a pearl, and a family time plan with two Samsung T629s. 
Wow. Yeah. How did you do that? Yeah. I'm a matchmaker. Looking for a mobile match? Look no further than Mobile One, a T-Mobile exclusive dealer. No matter the phone, price, or plan, we know exactly what you need. Stop in today and match up with the all-new Moto Riser. Mobile One, we're not heroes, just matchmakers. Wow. Call 1-800-NEW-2-MOBILE or surf by MyMobileOne.com. Who's next? Mm. In football? Calvin Johnson's next. A 6'5 wideout with 4'3 speed and a vertical? Up to here. I mean, odds are, if this guy chucks it downfield, Johnson's reeling it in. Do you know that he was even a pro baseball prospect in high school? <laughs> Fact. So, yeah, I'd say all that makes Calvin Johnson next. Whether it's who's next or what's next in the world of sports, nobody serves it up like ESPN the magazine. Call 1-877-ESPN-MAG to get 26 issues for only a dollar an issue. Call now and get this sleek MP3 player with your paid subscription, plus free online access to ESPN Insider. Each issue is packed with expert analysis only ESPN can deliver, covering all the stories behind the stories. Get what's next with 26 issues of ESPN the magazine, plus this sleek MP3 player with your paid subscription. Call now and see what's next. I thought I was next. Vince Young, rookie of the year, fan of the deli. But not next in line, sorry. Uh, half a pound of pastrami, thinly sliced, please. 13-7, Northern Illinois uh, leads Eastern Michigan as we get set to start quarter number three here on ESPN+. Plus. We're absolutely thrilled you're with us. Uh, this uh, sun-splashed Saturday afternoon in mid-September. Chris Nendek ready to boot it away, Eastern Michigan. We'll get their hands on the football here to start quarter number three with uh, Dontao Gage and Dwayne Priest back in those deep spots. And of course, Eastern Michigan uh, with the momentum uh, here uh, coming out of that locker room. And this is Dontao Gage, who had the 90-yard kickoff return last week on across that 25-yard line. And that is where Eastern Michigan will begin. All right, so let's start quarter number three. Great to have you with us. Michael Regai with former Marshall All-Mac running back uh, just a couple of years ago, Doug Chapman. Hey, you know what kudos belong to in that Eastern Michigan defense? Doug, think about it. They held uh, Northern Illinois to those two field goals in the, uh, the first half that kept them in the football game until their offense could catch up. It definitely has. With, with the success Northern Illinois has had running the ball, Eastern Michigan's defense has kept them out of the end zone. They only had one touchdown, and it's kept them in the football game. All right, it has. Let's see what Andy Schmidt uh, and his offense get. Will uh, Schmidt will start out of his shotgun and give the football to DeAnthony White on that uh, that receiver around. And DeAnthony White with that late flag as he got belted uh, outside that boundary on the white. As uh, they ran that gadget here to start the uh, the first play of the second half. And that might be Corey Hansen who wears number 26 is on that white boundary. He put the late hit on. After the play was over, dead ball, late hit, personal foul on the defense. Number eight, 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. They got Mark Ryder instead, so that's going to cost Northern Illinois 15 yards. But again, now how much does that uh, that strong offensive uh, performance in that last drive for Eastern Michigan help them here coming into the start of this third quarter, Doug? I think it definitely helps. It gives the team momentum going into halftime. They get the ball back in the second half. The play right there. They get a penalty on top of it, get a few yards out of it. But it definitely has to be a morale booster, considering the way the first half went for Eastern Michigan, that they can move the ball in this NIU defense. It's got to be a boost, and we'll see. Andy Schmidt on that quarterback keep, and uh, Schmidt got dragged down from behind. That's Larry English, who wears number 51. English with uh, 14 career sacks at sixth in uh, Northern Illinois history. First team all macker in 2006. Young man that is trying to get back uh, with his burst to 100% as uh, he was able to track down Andy Schmidt. So give Schmidt a gain of three. Let's call it second and seven. This is Eastern Michigan offense. That was looking to uh, find more big plays, explosive plays. Got exactly what they wanted in that regard at the end of the first half. On this inside delay, tough running tailback Pierre Walker out of Central High School in the Motor City of Detroit. He's got a first down to the 40-yard line as Eastern is on the march. And coming out of halftime, Coach Jettick has to be pleased with his offense. If you look at it right now, they're back in NIU territory. The opening drive, they're putting together a drive that could possibly put them up or within scoring ranks to get a field goal. Coach Jennick has to be pleased with his offense so far in the second half. All right, three wide receivers now for Eastern Michigan. 
on the move as uh, we discuss for the 40 yard line again uh, that uh, that inside delay out of the spread the tailback uh, Pierre Walker but this time uh, Walker doesn't get started as uh, he was belted to the ground that inside delay play can actually lull defense to sleep because you give it to the running back you give it to the running back and then just when the defense is used to seeing that running back coming downhill with it the quarterback takes it out he boots out hits that tight end in the flats hits the receiver in the flanker in the flats or hits the deep ball over the middle of the field like we saw in the first half no gain for walker let's call it second and ten now that line to make down at the 30 andy schmidt Schmidt going to throw that fade right sideline and going up and making the grab in traffic was Travis Lewis. So they're going to give him that catch. Yes, they are. He beat Melvin Rice. Timing throw to the right sideline and Lewis went up in the air. The hoopster at Eastern Michigan making the fine 24 yard reception. Look at the pass protection up front and you see the running back as he gets the as Schmidt even pumps the ball to wait for the defensive end to get his hands down. He had plenty of time to deliver that ball. Puts it right where it needs to be where only his receiver can get it first down and now they're, in, they're almost in the red zone. Eastern Michigan inside that go zone at the 16 yard line again that inside call is going to go to Pierre Walker Walker tried to follow the block of the best on that offensive line TJ Lang the 300 pound left tackle who wears number 50 and uh, stumbled down after a short gain of a couple if Walker could have kept his legs on that play he might be in the end zone right now he kind of was looking to make a cut didn't have his feet under him stumble a little bit but it was a nice seam off the left side of that line of scrimmage for him to get through Andy Schmidt after that throw to Travis Lewis on that timing route on the fade on the sideline now up to 8 of 14 for 110 yards. Eastern Michigan knocking on the door second and nine and that backfield will empty with motion from Walker that quick slant fine defensive play. Made by uh, Josh Allen, that, uh, that weak side linebacker, 211 pound junior, as Smith tried to fit that into a tight seam, Doug. And as Smith tried to fit it in, Allen was right there as soon as the ball was delivered. Great defensive play, not using that off arm, which what a lot of defenders use, that off arm where you see pass interference. He didn't use his left arm to hold the receiver, came across the front of him with his right arm, deflected the ball. Great play on that by the defense. A third and nine now for Eastern Michigan. As we said, they have struggled in their two first games of the season on third down. The line to make that at the six yard line. Third and nine for Andy Schmidt. Schmidt looking end zone. Going to come underneath, and that pass is caught by Tyler Jones. But Jones is going to come up short. Again, the line to make was down at the six. Uh, Jones uh, taken down at the nine. It's going to bring up a fourth and a long two. That was good defense by Northern Illinois. They kept everyone out of the end zone. They gave Schmidt nothing but the underneath pass. Although the, the, the play didn't result in a touchdown, it puts them in a position for a short field goal. Uh, Jeff Jennick is going to opt to uh, say, let's get points on the board for the Eagles' cause. And he'll send a Sean Dutcher onto the football field. Uh, Dutcher out of the hole to Zach Johnson. Jerry Topolinski, the long snapper. This will be a 26 yard field goal from the right hash. That long count as that play clock continues to wind down, and now it has hit zero. That's a smart play by Jenny. They're going to take the penalty, back themselves up five yards, still a very makeable field goal. But by sending that man in motion to the boundary, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get Northern Illinois to jump off sides. You only need three yards for the first down. An offsides penalty gives you an automatic first down. Very smart. It didn't work. Northern Illinois was very disciplined. They stayed on sides. And now he's got a five yard longer field goal. Well, Bobby Joe Pruitt had that play in the Marshall playbook back in the day, didn't he? Oh, we should send two guys out. I mean, we, we tried it all to get guys to jump off sides. The test the defense discipline. Let's call it a 31 yard field goal now for Sean Dutcher out of the hole to Zach Johnson who's kneeling at that right hash. A plenty of leg from Dutcher but he pushed it wide right. Wow. Coach Jenny cannot be pleased with that. They have to get points out of that. They wanted to cut this to just a three point deficit. Dutcher wasn't able to convert Northern Illinois with a football when we get you back. Geico sponsors Mike's race car because they ensure everything race car fans love. RVs, motorcycles, ATVs. I'll tell you one thing they can ensure. Lauren Wallace. Because Lauren Wallace is 
made a lightning. Those guys are like, hey, where's Lauren? He was just here a minute ago. I'm 100 miles away, son. Ready to strike. Geico, saving you money on insurance for your car and the other stuff that moves you. In my younger days, I made lots of mistakes. I hung out with the wrong people. Got into some bad habits. I neglected my relationships. The drinking was the worst. Now more. I take better care of myself. Things are looking up. Kaiser Permanente. Thrive. Where do diehard Mac fans go for the latest in Mac news and information? Mac-Sports.com, the official website of the Mid-American Conference. That's Mac-Sports.com for news, notes, stats, standings, and contests. Read headlines from across the country in the Mac beat. Want to know what's on the air? Mac-Sports.com is your source for the latest Mac TV and radio schedules and links. You can even watch highlights and listen to coaches talk in the Mac multimedia section. Bookmark it today. Mac-Sports.com. Pre-Katrina, we have 177 youth football teams. After Katrina, we lost field lights, we lost posts, we lost facility roofs. Jeff Jennick with a little bit of chat, huh? some educational uh, work uh, verbally to his uh, field goal kicker, Sean Dutcher, who uh, wasn't able to convert there from uh, 31 yards away that would have put Eastern Michigan a little bit closer in this, what still is a 13-7 Northern Illinois lead. That's a kick right there your kicker has to make. That's yeah. one of those kicks that keeps you in the game. You know, that's, that's a kick when your kicker comes to the sideline. He knows he shouldn't have missed it. He knows he shouldn't have pushed it. He might have been a bit nervous. But as your coach, you have to tell this guy, this is a kick in a game like this you have to make. Hey, let's take a look at our Gatorade Max scoreboard. J.D. Brookhard and uh, the Akron Zips in Bloomington, Indiana today put 17 points on the board in the second quarter. They're all even with uh, Indiana's Hoosiers at 17 at halftime. Of course, Akron with a win over Army a couple of weeks ago in uh, week number one, and uh, they'll get into Mac play against their neighborhood rivals, Kent State, next week. Uh, Dan Nicholson now going to give the football to Justin Anderson. Well, look at Anderson lower that shoulder and pull his way out over the 30-yard line. Anderson has just gone over the 100-yard mark. Career high he's established for this young man. Doug on his 22nd carry of the afternoon. He's looking at a path to be in the 30 to 35 range today for totes of the football. And the sophomore is looking very, very comfortable right now, taking the ball off tackle. He looks very comfortable. He puts his shoulder down, shows some power at the end of the run. The running backs here at Northern Illinois are not new to getting 30, 35 carries per ball game. No, that's uh, that's what legacy is here. Now that wide receiver screen is a gun to uh, wide out uh, Matt Simon, and Simon will hurry his way over the 40-yard line. But Dan Nicholson, his junior quarterback, has bounced back from a tough fourth quarter last week, and he has been most proficient today. He has been extremely proficient, and that running game has definitely helped. But he's making smart throws. He's not trying to do anything. He's not trying to force the ball. He's giving what the defense. He's taking what the defense is giving him. And so, thus far, he's managed the game great. 12 of 15 for 90 yards. Remember last week, though, even though he had these, had the problems with the six picks, Doug, in the first two games. But even with that, last week, he breaks an existing Northern Illinois school record. He hit 15 consecutive throws in that loss to Southern Illinois. And that's why Joe Novak told us, you know, yesterday he said, after Iowa, my football team was disappointed. They lost 16 to 3. But Doug, he said, after the Southern Illinois game, they were mad, they were angry. As you see the first down on that Nicholson throw to Matt Simon. Because they felt, in no way they felt they should have given up a 31 to 14, 17 point fourth quarter lead in this venue. Right. They feel they gave that game away. And getting back to Nicholson, the kid can play. That's why Coach Novak. Can't
keeps him in there. He struggled a little bit. Every quarterback struggles, but your team has to rally around you. Your coach has to believe in you. And as long as the quarterback does not begin to what they call pout, or we call going into the tank, mm -hmm. where he feels he's not able to make plays. And Nicholson has avoided that, and you see today he's having a strong performance. Back to the run game. Justin Anderson will level off and uh, get into that secondary as uh, that first down call for Anderson. That's him five more. Daniel Holtzclaw making the stop. Uh, and in that first half, Holtzclaw, along with his fellow linebacker, Andre Hatchett, each with ten first-half tackles. And most of them on that young man, of course, uh, Justin Anderson. Well, they've seen number 21 in their face all afternoon. He's been, he's been in that, that, that linebacker, secondary, and, and defensive back region the entire game. Let's call it second and six now. But uh, we've got whistles to stop it. Well, you know, no, I, I saw the first time out this half. Two time out. Referee Stan Evans letting you know that uh, the Northern offense wants to uh, chat about things a little bit. All right, what do you say we uh, step aside briefly as Northern Illinois, are they on the march again, trying to add to their 13-7 lead? Coming right back to DeKalb in a moment. You are killing me, Birdwood. Hey, take the secret shortcut. I've never heard of the secret shortcut. Because it's a secret, Ham. Take it. Not bad, Birdwood. You ever taken this trail, Birdwood? Once, including now. Now would be a good time to have accident forgiveness. Not too bad. Or new car replacement. Your choice auto insurance. Only from Allstate. Birdwood. Are you in good hands? Melty Cheese. Taco Bell's new Cheesy Beefy Melt. To get seasoned beef, melty, melty, and even more glorious Melty Cheese, think outside the bun. Why all of this suffering? If you did not know suffering, you would not know happiness. I just want to watch the game. There is a peaceful solution. You mean like Comcast? Correct. Who orders a dish in the city of wind? Comcast Digital Cable with On Demand and HBO. Just $29.99 per month for six months. Are you enlightened? Call 1-888-4-BEST-TV. Eastern Michigan football team, uh, and you know what? Going on the road uh, is not going to be as daunting a task as it has been in years gone by. As they're playing Northern Illinois tough here in uh, quarter number three. As uh, this Mac West division battle ensues, Northern Illinois looking at a, a second and six. Along with our producer Greg Logan, director Howard Miller, Joel Bowser, our technical director, and all of our terrific crew, all the men and women. ESPN Plus doing a fabulous job today. Doug Chapman's here. I'm Michael Regai, and uh, you enjoying this one on this sun-kissed Saturday afternoon as Dan Nicholson wants to put it up. Airing it out deep. It is caught by Britt Davis, and then he forgot to hang on to the football. That had six written all over it, and Davis had separated from Jacob Wyatt and was headed to the house. This is really the first time NIU has dropped back a deep pattern. With the way they've been running the ball, they're bringing a lot of guys from Eastern Michigan down into the box, which creates one-on-one -on -one matchups on the corners. And right then, Britt Davis did what he was supposed to do until, it, until the ball came to him. He hit him right in a bad place, his numbers, and he dropped it. Yeah, Britt Davis, as we said, the, uh, the quickest to go over the 100 reception mark in the history of this Northern Illinois program. Had six there, but did not hang out of the football. Nicholson being pressured, and down he goes. Sack time for the backside. That is uh, the big hit. 
from Eastern Michigan's defense that came from Eric Young, the junior college transfer from Northern Iowa CC. That is a huge play by Eastern Michigan to bring up the fourth, bring up the fourth down. They dodged a bullet with the Davis drop, and then right then Eric Young gets great penetration to the backfield. He beats his man, gets held really, and just comes and smothers the quarterback for a loss. Was able to beat uh, left tackle Chris Acevedo, the uh, the senior starter. Now to boot it away is uh, Andy Ditbenner. And signaling for that fair catch at the, uh, the 10 yard line, Nate Beard. And uh, that's where the Eastern Michigan offense will begin with uh, 90 yards of real estate ahead of them. Trying to tie this one up and maybe go ahead. But the Eastern Michigan defense, Doug, we, we discussed it uh, during halftime. And, you know, again, you say, well, wait a minute. They, they've given up, uh, you know, well over 200 yards today. However, they've been able to hold Northern Illinois to three in a couple of crucial moments in the first half to keep them in the football game. They've been playing bend but don't break defense. They're going to give up the run, it seems like. But they're not allowing the big plays. They, I think with the run, they say you choose your death via the run of the pass. The pass is a quick death, run is a slow death. And that slow death has kept them in the ball game right now. Andy Schmidt out of the shotgun will give the football to his uh, tailback. As that's Pierre Walker with the carry as he got a couple on that first down call. All right, let's go back and uh, take a peek at other happenings around the Mid-American Conference today, our Gatorade Max scoreboard. Well, Temple, Al Golden's football team in the third quarter with a couple of touchdowns on the board, uh, trying to win uh, in stores at UConn today, down by two. And Akron Zips, 17 second quarter points, they had tied up Indiana. Indiana on the board with a third quarter field goal. As Akron now down 2017. Again, that inside delay uh, out of the uh, the shotgun formation is that call on the carry for Eastern Michigan was with Terrence Blevins, their third tailback. It's the first time we've seen Blevins today. Levin's uh, the young man out of the uh, the city of Detroit, out of Denby High School. Houston Michigan has to find a way on the first down, the second down, get more yards on this play because they put themselves in third and five plus, and it's really allowing Northern Illinois' defense to dictate to them which plays they can run. Three wide receivers. Northern Illinois showing blitz, and here they come. Firing the strike is Andy Smith, as Smith's throw was right on time, as uh, his throw was perfect, as he was able to hit Tyler Jones. And again, Jones is, is the number two quarterback on this football team. Doug, it's real simple. Jeff Jennings says, I get him, got to get him on the football field. He's too good an athlete. He's a good athlete. He got to get the ball in his hands. Most quarterbacks do have good hands, but it's hard to get some quarterbacks to make the adjustment from throwing routes to running routes. You see right there, they bring the blitz. He does a good job running to where the blitzing defender vacated, catching the ball, first down. Well, Andy Smith really starting to find his rhythm again. That wide receiver reverse. This is DeAnthony White. White has come free. White looking for a block from Andy Smith. Got a great block and touchdown. DeAnthony White and Eastern Michigan with the block thrown by quarterback Andy Smith. I don't think they drew it up that way, but right, that's what you call a game-changing play right there. Smith gets the snap. He hands it off to White. White turns it upfield, cuts it back completely across the field. Now, this is just speed. You can't coach speed. Great angle. Great angle by the def defender. But watch how White, the patience he uses. And Smith, he's a tough kid. This kid just came off shoulder, shoulder surgery. Leans his shoulder there, gets the touchdown springing block. Great play. Great hustle by the quarterback. Now, uh, Sean Dutcher to add the PAT. And how about this? Eastern Michigan on top by one at 14-13 with 14 unanswered points, a 68-yard touchdown run. Doug Chapman, how many times do you see a quarterback 60 yards downfield throwing blocks for his wide receivers off a reverse? A lot of times your quarterback is 60 yards the opposite direction, hopping up and down, hoping <laughs> you get to the end zone. But, I mean, this is just great hustle by Schmidt right here. Great hustle. And instead of throwing at the guy's legs, it's not a pretty block, but you just shield it off and let your skill position guy do what he does best. 
Uh, he gave Chase Carter that final uh, shield block, and all you got to do is direct him uh, to the inside. And you're right, Doug. The Anthony White read that beautifully and uh, certainly gave uh, Schmidt an opportunity to make that block for him. That was a great run. I mean, he brought it back across the field, cut it back against the frame, got to the open field, and he actually set Schmidt up to put him in the position. He slowed down, waited for his blocker. That's a great play. Those are the type of plays Eastern Michigan has to make. We talked about earlier, they only had one play of 20 plus yards coming to this game. Minimizing big plays will keep you from scoring points. They've had a couple big plays today, and that's what's kept them in the ball game. And now they're leading this ball game. The Anthony White, as uh, we told you in the first half, he burst on the scene last week with a 67-yard uh, touchdown catch on the throw from Andy Schmidt, and now he is. Uh, Take it into the house on the reverse as well. So how does Northern Illinois respond? Well, we are going to find out now as that kickoff comes up short. This is Patrick George looking to get to the edge. Patrick George with that stiff arm at the 35-yard line. So now well, you can feel that the emotion and uh, the intensity has certainly picked up here. As uh, we have Northern Illinois' Anthony Antonacci, uh, the special team player, down now and injured and being attended to by the Northern Illinois training staff. Uh, while Anthony Antonacci is uh, being attended to, uh, let's take a look at our ESPNU All State uh, Top 10. Fan review. This is voted by you, the fans, this week, and you like um, the Tigers of LSU as the top football team in the country over USC. Hey, USC's got a big one today in Lincoln, Nebraska, against those Cornhuskers. They've got a big game, but they've got big players on that team. They have the type of guys on that team that they have. I think believe they're eight deep at running back. They have eight All-Americans playing one position. They've got John David Booty, is a great quarterback. I'm not sure if I'd put LSU ahead of them quite yet, but. USC to me is still the number one team in the nation. And of course, West Virginia. We saw uh, the Mountaineers uh, the other night here on the ESPN family of networks go to a 3 0 with their win in uh, Bird Stadium over the Maryland Terrapins, Ralph Friedgen. And uh, good to see uh, Anthony Antonacci at least on his feet. And the Miami Redhawks have uh, played very solid football uh, this year uh, for head coach Shane Montgomery as they got their win uh, up in Minnesota in overtime as we take another peek at the Gatorade Max scoreboard. However, uh, down at Yeager Stadium here this afternoon, this one also uh, on ESPN Plus. Well, Brian Kelly, Doug, who coached Central Michigan to a MAC championship last year before taking the Cincinnati job. They beat Oregon State last week. He has the Bearcats out on fire as they've got that 16-point lead looking to go to 3-0. That's, I tell you, you, you can't, you can never underestimate an opponent no matter what conference. We've seen it in college football year after year. We've seen it again this year. All right, how does Dan Nicholson in Northern Illinois respond? And Nicholson is down and snowed under as that blitz came from Darren Matthews out of Thurston High School in Redford. Matthews uh, with a big time takedown of Nicholson. Right now, Eastern Michigan is playing Jack up. They are very excited. You see the momentum on the sideline. You see on the field, everybody's standing up. Guys are hopping around. But I tell you one thing, I'm surprised that Northern Illinois went to the pass. If I was Coach Novak, I would not panic. I would go back to running the ball. It's gotten you this far in the game. Slow the game down. Slow down Eastern Michigan's tempo, but they drop back to passing. Eastern Michigan got a big sack. Second and 18, Nicholson under pressure. Jason Jones missed it, but Nicholson's throw is behind Britt Davis, which will bring up a third down now and 18. As you know, you, momentum is absolutely enormous in this game, and it has changed colors in a big time way here. It's changed colors in one play. That big touchdown run has given Eastern Michigan right now the momentum to feel that they can take this ball game and control it. The defense has woken up, and now they're playing inspired football. They're in Northern Illinois' backfield every snap so far. Third down and 18 for NAU. Well, Jason Jones had the heat on there. The uh, Outstanding 270 pound defensive tackle third and 18 for Dan Nicholson. He'll run with three wide receivers Nicholson to set up screen left. This is Justin Anderson Anderson tried to make a move, but he was taken down from the backside as that hit came 
from uh, Eastern Michigan, uh, Spencer Smith, that uh, trailing defensive end who made the takedown. We're going to bring up fourth down, and Northern Illinois has got to punt it away. That's a huge, huge series for Eastern Michigan. They're getting the ball back. They've got momentum. They've got a couple big plays. They know they can move the ball now on Northern Illinois, and now they've seen that they can stop NIU. So right now, the momentum has definitely swung in favor for Eastern Michigan. And again, uh, back in that deep spot is Nate Beard as he stands at that 20-yard line. Beard from the 20. And Beard uh, taken down right away. Anthony Mason, the uh, redshirt sophomore, wears number one on that special team's hit. Eastern Michigan rejuvenated and with a 14-13 lead when we get you back. Rosanna Olson, Farmers Insurance agent. Yes. Singing telegram from Scott Berger. He says, you and Help Point really saved me after my car accident. Thanks. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. You ready for the singing part? Sure. <laughs> comes from stadium stairs at 5 in the morning, from suicides to your lungs scream uncle, and two a days when it's hot enough to fry an egg on your forehead. It's sweat, and there's more to sweat than just water. No wonder, no water, no flavored water, no other sports drink on the planet helps put back what sweat takes out better than Gatorade. The sun burns at 11,000 degrees, especially when it's on your side of the cabin. But the Acura MDX monitors the sun and adjusts to keep you comfortable. If it knows where the sun is, imagine everything else it knows. Satellite-linked, fully automatic climate control. Only from Acura. Acura. Advance. See your Acura dealer for attractive lease rates on 2008 Acura models for well-qualified customers. From the creators of Cops, go beyond the bust. There's a bullet in my Jaguar! See what really happens inside jail. Tuesday at 8 on My 50 Chicago. The Mac Game of the Week from ESPN Plus kicks off Saturday, September 22nd at noon Eastern when the Temple Owls fly to Ohio to take on the Falcons of Bowling Green. Oh, the golden flashes of Kent State head north to take on the Akron Zips. Check your local listings to catch the Mac Game of the Week. It's Temple against Bowling Green or Kent State meets Akron on Saturday, September 22nd at noon Eastern only from ESPN Plus. That's why you got to keep it locked down here on ESPN Plus throughout this uh, college football season. Doubleheader Mac action like that. And boy, oh, this uh, Eastern Michigan sideline has been very jubilant. And uh, why not? And hey, how about this now? Frank Solich, as we look at the Gatorade Mac scoreboard, is Ohio Bobcats looking to go to 3 0. And they've got the touchdown lead over struggling Virginia Tech, who just got hammered last week down at LSU. Not only did they get hammered, they're playing a new quarterback, a freshman quarterback. I believe this is Rod Taylor. The first time Beamer has ever ever started a true freshman. Michael Vick didn't even start there as a true freshman. So you have a new quarterback coming off of a game where they really, really got lit up last week down in Baton Rouge. Yeah. And Ohio is not a slouch. Solis is a great coach. I'm sure he has his guys ready to play. Yes, he is. Now, the key here, how does Eastern Michigan play with the lead? They're going to go right back to DeAnthony White on that wide receiver reverse. But this time, Northern Illinois got that pursuit for the backside and got it taken care of as John Tranchantella, the middle linebacker, playing for the injured Tim McCarthy, made the hit. I guess they figured it worked well the first time. Let's go back to it. Nice gain, five-yard gain. As you see the blockers, nice hold. Nice read on the hole, turn it upfield. Get a nice five yard gain out of it. But good pursuit by Northern Illinois taking away the cutback seat, which they gave him on the long touchdown run. Tranchatella made that, uh, that finalizing hit. The Anthony White got five. Go back to that uh, inside delay game with uh, the carry for Pierre Walker. The line to make is out at the 35 yard line to keep this drive alive. Walker got a couple. It's going to break up a third and three. Doug Chapman, we've seen it so many times. Oh, Eastern Michigan fought back with a couple of touchdowns. How do you play when you have the lead sometimes? And how important is that to continue to sustain what's been good for you? This is what you call how you find what kind of team you have. If you have a championship team, 
is when you the way you play from behind and the way you play with the lead. Right now, it's kind of foreign to Eastern Michigan to, sure be playing, to be protecting what they call protecting a lead in the second half. So right now, good to see how well the quarterback manages the game and how well the defense continues to play, making NIU go three and out. All right, third and two now for Schmidt. He's on time with that pitch and catch as he'll hook up with that backup quarterback playing wide receiver, Tyler Jones. The confidence right now and the presence that uh, the uh, the young quarterback, Andy Schmidt, has running his offense. It's kind of a big change from what we saw in the first half. Big change, and right now they're, they're playing safe football. They're not trying things that they haven't been doing all game. Nice, safe throws, not giving the quarterback more than he can handle. They're rotating the running back. One running back is running well inside. They're Getting the plays off tackle, the line is holding up. So right now they're playing smart football, trying to protect this lead and get out of here with the win. Now off that uh, fake of the reverse, Schmidt wants to air it out again and go deep. And this throw is caught at the 15-yard line as Andy Schmidt right on the money with Tyrone Burke, a freshman out of Syracuse, New York. But it's going to come back. It's going to be called back on an Eastern Michigan hold. Holding on the offense, number 50. Fouls penalized 10 yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. See the tackle. The, the guard pulls around and he, he, ah. That's a, that's kind of a, 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 a iffy call, but when you got the hands in the back of the guy's jersey and the refs right there, they're going to call it. No, Tyrone Burke had that uh, big reception negated on the hole. So the football back at the 32-yard line now on first to 20. On the carry, Pierre Walker trying to slither his way through a small crease. It'll bounce out over the 40-yard line. But well, Walker was able to bust a couple of tackles. Finally, Ed Jackson was able to get him to the ground for Northern Illinois, the redshirt freshman. If Ed Jackson doesn't make that play. Pierre Walker is still running. They're playing a lot more inspired. The running backs are running harder. Early in the first quarter, Pierre Walker would have went down on first contact. The guys are running harder. Their legs are churning. They're getting their pad level down. And they're breaking a lot of tackles that they want breaking the first half. Eastern Michigan has dropped their last four meetings here in this building. Haven't won in here in a decade. 1997 was the last time. Late third quarter with the lead here. Schmidt is on time as he's got the Anthony White. White will hit the midfield stripe. White was uh, hit and taken to the ground by the uh, sophomore linebacker Phil Brown. But Doug, how familiar are the quarterbacks? You see quarterbacks that start to feel a flow and a rhythm with a guy. Schmidt and the Anthony White seem to be developing that. It seems those two are on the same page. Sometimes you, know, you see guys like Peyton Manning and Marvin Harrison in the NFL. Peyton Manning knows what what Marvin Harrison is going to do before Marvin Harrison does it. That's the chemistry you, you'd like to see between a receiver and a quarterback. And it seems to date that Schmidt and White are starting to get that chemistry between the two of them. Anthony White now has touched the football six times for a total of 138 yards on third and three. Give the football on again that inside delay and very close to the first down uh, sticks is Pierre Walker. Walker, the 200 pound senior out of Central High in Detroit for head coach Jeff Jennick. We'll have to see where that's spotted by referee uh, Stan Evans and his crew, and they're going to want the sticks to come out to uh, measure that. Now, if it comes up short, Doug Chapman, and then right here, and we're a long way away, <laughs> make sure that that's understood. From the naked eye, though, it looks like it might be a little bit short. One-point lead, late third quarter. You're looking at the football on the northern Illinois side of the football field and what would be fourth and short. What are you doing if you're Jeff Jennings? But I guess it's academic because it is a first up. My eyes aren't as good as they used to be, Doug. Well, if you're asking Coach Jennings, he's going to probably play it safe. But if you're asking me, Doug Chapman, I'm going to run the ball right here and try to pick up the first down. Well, that spot negated all of that. <laughs> we set up what could have been. But uh, moot point now, first down, Eastern Michigan. Great to have you with us on ESPN Plus out of Husky Stadium here in DeKalb on the campus of Northern Illinois, Eastern Michigan, Northern Illinois. Both 0-2 football teams, you wouldn't know it the way they're playing today. 
had movement on the left side of that Eastern Michigan offensive line, and that's going to uh, negate that first down play. Before the snap, false start on the offense. It's the left guard. Five yard penalty. Still first down. It'll cost Eastern Michigan five and uh, back them up now to their own 47 yard line and they're going to be looking at a second down to make it first down and a 15 under the direction of third year sophomore Andy Schmidt. So defensive coordinator Denny Dornboos and this Northern Illinois defense they could have been stung. That late first half drive that puts seven on the board and then the De'Anthony White reverse for the touchdown. Well, Larry English, Larry English got off his block along with outside linebacker Josh Allen and they took Pierre Walker down in his tracks. Larry English was not having any parts of that play. He, he was not going to let himself get blocked. He said he's seen that play spring for a long touchdown. He's not, they're not going to get him on this one. He beats his man to the ground and makes a huge play. Well, English had 12 sacks last season. That's uh, the Northern Illinois single season best. And again, Joe Novak made it very clear to us yesterday, Novak and Denny Dornboos, that he's not 100% yet coming back from that injury of a season ago. All right, now second and 16, Schmidt, wide receiver screen to Anthony White. Oh, he's exciting in open space. Inside the 40, down to the 39-yard line. This young man is going to thrill Eastern Michigan fans around Ypsilanti, Michigan. He's that special kind of guy. Doug, you hold your breath when he gets a football in his hands. I think Coach Jenick and company have found their playmaker. He's a guy that he can take it to the house from any part of the field. They've got to find ways to get him the ball. And today, I think he's he's coming into his own. Him and the, him and the quarterback, they're getting on the same page. He's made some big plays. He's made some big runs, some big catches. And, you know, the future looks bright for this kid. Four receptions for 73 yards today after a big week against Ball State. Third and three, another big third down. Get the football. Pierre Walker has come free, and he's got an Eastern Michigan first down. That third down carry, pretty much it's been consistent. It's out of the spread formation, Doug, in that inside reverse with the offset back. It's been a staple of the Eastern Michigan run game today. It definitely has. They're giving the running back the ball. You get a two-way go. There's no designed hole, but right here he gets through the hole, and he's one trip foot away from turning this into a bigger play than it was. The work of that offensive line as well for Eastern Michigan today. T.J. Lang is the best of the bunch. The 300-pound left tackle out of Birmingham, Brother Rice, that fine program in the Detroit area. As this third quarter has expired, let's go back to the most explosive play of the afternoon. De'Anthony White on that wide receiver reverse. 68-yard gallop to the house. Eastern Michigan with a one-point lead. And the amazing thing is you can stay any hotel anywhere using your points. Last year, we went to Trinidad and Tobago. All on points. My uncle was eaten by an alligator on a trip to Africa, but we used our points. So in the end, it wasn't a half bad trip. This year, we're thinking about going I remember one time I fell asleep in a tanning bed. Ugh, how embarrassing, huh? I didn't do a tanning bed. Why are you asking that? Why do you have goggle lines? What did you just say to me? <laughs> Six thousand four hundred student athletes. One point seven million fans. Thirty two bowl champions. College bowl games where everybody wins. Brought to you by the Football Bowl Association. In my younger days, I made lots of mistakes. I hung out with the wrong people. Got into some bad habits. I neglected my relationships. The drinking was the worst. Now more, I take better care of myself. Things are looking up. Kaiser Permanente. Thrive. Mac Football on My50 Chicago is brought to you by Carex. 
For complete car care, it's CarX, where now our full-service oil change comes with two free wiper blades. And our full-service oil change is now just $27.99, including the free wiper blades. Don't worry, call the CarX man. Where do you find world-class Volkswagen service? Right here at Larry Roche Volkswagen in Elmhurst on Grand Avenue. Also visit us online at LarryRocheVW.com. For complete car care, it's CarX, where our lifetime brakes come with a free oil change. Lifetime brakes for $79.95, and that's $79.95 installed, plus a free CarX oil change. Don't worry, call the CarX man. The road to Sunday's action starts here. NFL Network Total Access. Tonight at 8 on My 50 Chicago. You want high school action? We've got it. FoxHighlights.com. Tom Waddle, direct from the NFL Network Studios, Sunday night at 10. The final word. Plenty of color, a lot of excitement around uh, Northern Illinois today here in DeKalb as Eastern Michigan with a big third quarter. With his 14-13 advantage now as we head to quarter number four. Both these football teams, as we said, thirsty, looking for their first win of the year. Michael Regai with former Marshall All-Mac running back Doug Chapman. And that third quarter was dominated by Eastern Michigan. The one big play really set the tone for not only the offensive side, but their defensive side as well. When you get a big play on either side of the ball, it affects the other side of the ball. That happened to be on offense, and it actually got the defense pumped up. They made Northern Illinois go three and out, get out of their comfort level of running the ball, making them pass, getting in the backfield, disrupting, and it's showing right now. And the defense has just been flying around, playing with uh, a tremendous amount of energy. As uh, now the football at the 34-yard uh, line for quarterback Andy Schmidt. Schmidt will go to Pierre Walker. This is Walker on the call, and Walker got a couple. All right, let's take a look at how Eastern Michigan got this thing going. If you're just joining us, they were down 13-0 when the momentum changed here in the third quarter. 68-yard wide receiver reverse to DeAnthony White. Great play by DeAnthony White, and even better play by the quarterback. Schmidt getting all the way downfield, getting a block for his guy. Then for the defensive side, uh, that front four, the front seven actually has really come strong uh, with work out of that uh, that front four and from the linebackers as well. On second down and nine, that seam route gunned on time by quarterback Andy Schmidt as he's hooked up again with DeAnthony White. Well, White is not afraid to go over the middle, Doug Chapman. That's an Eastern Michigan first down. White has had a sparkling day catching the football and, of course, being a threat, running it as well from the wideout spot. He's an all-purpose guy. And you can tell the way they're running their offense right now with that little underneath handoff. It's making the linebackers from Northern Illinois commit to the run, which is opening up the passing game. Oh, Andy Schmidt now with his football team in that red zone inside the 20. Schmidt will give to Pierre Walker. Walker still alive, sifting his way through a crowd and carrying Northern Illinois defenders down inside the 10. Doug, isn't it as amazing when you start making some plays in the pass game how the run game starts to pick up as well? They go hand in hand. The run opens up the pass, the pass opens up the run. And not just that, the guys from Eastern Michigan are playing more inspired right now. They didn't have a lot of inspiration when they came out in the first half. They were just kind of going through the motions. But you can see right now the running backs are running harder. They're breaking the first arm tackle, getting yards after contact. The quarterback is hustling downfield and making big plays. At second and one, Pierre Walker will surge forward down near the five, and that's an Eastern Michigan first down. So here in the first three plays of the fourth quarter, that big throw to DeAnthony White and that uh, that crossing route, and now the two runs from Walker. And uh, we have uh, Josh Allen, who wears number nine for Northern Illinois, down uh, trying to collect himself uh, injured for the Huskies. NIU was pretty nicked up coming into this ball game, and I'm sure Coach Novak is not pleased with seeing this many guys go down. Yeah, the Eastern Michigan Eagle liking the looks of the second half. Eastern Michigan on the move, Husky trying to add the to their one-point lead. By signing up for Husky. With Sirius Satellite Radio, you can hear what you've been missing. 69 music channels, from rock to pop, hip-hop to country, all 100% commercial-free. Get the best sports, like NASCAR 24-7, the NBA, and every NFL game every week, everywhere. Get the biggest and best in talk and entertainment, including, of course, Howard Stern. Get over 130 channels and hear what you've been missing. Welcome to Sirius, the best radio on radio. Why do you always get the front seat? Because I have a higher education. 
Well, you I took the honors classes. In high school. Hey, it's Bobby Bowden. I'm gonna touch him. Now would be a good time to have accident forgiveness. I'm still gonna touch him. Part of Allstate, your choice auto insurance. Are you in good hands? That wasn't him. Are you still touched him? Cheese. Taco Bell's new cheesy beefy melt. To get seasoned beef, melty, melty, and even more glorious melty cheese, think outside the bun. Quality products for low prices, Menards. All power grab adhesives are 25% off. They feature instant grab, which has nine times the initial grab power over other adhesives. Great for drywall, paneling, subfloors, and exterior use. A 10-ounce tube is just $1.99. Multi-purpose clear or black plastic from Polar Plastic is great for covering insulation, windows, or landscaping. A 10-foot by 25-foot roll is free after rebate. Plus, there are zero payments and no interest till summer when you use your big car. Save big money at Menards. On a sun-kissed Saturday afternoon in uh, mid-September. Got a great one going on here for you inside Husky Stadium. Eastern Michigan knocking on the door now. At the six-yard line, first and goal from the six, trying to add to their one-point lead on Northern Illinois. Give the football to Pierre Walker. Walker cut back off the block of Desi Maynard and Khalid Walton at center and a right guard and uh, plast his way down to the one. Four more for Pierre Walker. Doug Chapman has really uh, picked up his abilities to run the football effectively in the second half. He's running the ball with a lot more intensity, and not just that, they're taking valuable time off the clock. Remember now, they are actually winning this ball game. So they're taking time off the clock that Northern Illinois is going to eventually need to come back and score more points. Well, Pierre Walker got uh, stopped there as that uh, Northern Illinois defense, uh, Larry English, uh, in on the stop. English got some help from Brandon Bice. Defensive ends uh, helping there. Corey Hansen also in on the tackle. Right now you see no sense of urgency. They're not rushing. They're letting the play clock run, letting the game clock run. They're at the three-yard line. They're, they, have a, they have a one point lead, which is not a big lead, but they're playing comfortable. They're playing with a lot of confidence right now in offense, which they did not have in the first half. All right, three wide receivers now, but as that play clock was uh, ready to get down towards zero, Eastern Michigan deciding to burn another timeout. Time out. Eastern Michigan, that's Eastern's first timeout this half. Two timeouts remaining. Well, timeout Jeff Jennick, 30 seconds. Jeff Jennick and uh, his offensive unit, they want to be sure that everybody has uh, got this correct call in this most crucial third and goal. This is a huge third and goal. They would rather get six points than three out of this, I'm sure. But I'm sure they have to be happy with where the ball is. So right now, this third down, they're going to try to get the ball into the end zone. I would say getting the quarterback out of the eggs, maybe roll him out, uh, get, him a little, get him a little space, where he gets the run pass option. But maybe they might go back to the running game, which has, got, which has done well so far in the fourth quarter. We're in the fourth quarter on ESPN Plus. Let's take a look at our Taco Bell late game analysis. Eastern Michigan leading by one. The total yards, uh, well, it's been Eastern Michigan with that big bump here in the second half. You see in this third quarter, early fourth, 225 yards of total offense. And DeAnthony White, the young man from Kennesaw, Georgia, has had a monstrous performance. All right, third down now and goal for the three-yard line. Schmidt out of the shotgun. He'll throw the fade to the corner. It is broken up and batted away by Melvin Rice. Rice, the outstanding cover corner. That throw was intended for Travis Lewis, but it was Melvin Rice in coverage who made the fine defensive play. Great defense by Rice. Big play. Makes them bring on the field goal unit right now. Instead of getting six out of that trip, they get three. Great play. Puts his body exactly where it is. No, he used the sideline as an extra defender. Gives the receiver nowhere to go. Makes the ball extremely uncatchable. All right, Sean Dutcher. Extra point opportunity. Pretty much in effect here out of the hold of uh, Zach Johnson. And Dutcher has missed it. The second field goal 
attempt missed today. That was a, a, absolutely an extra point from the 10 yard line and uh, from behind Dutcher in the other end zone. He pulled that terribly wide. When you see a kicker miss one that bad, that's just nerves right there. Eastern Michigan without opportunity, had opportunity, not able to add onto their lead. This moment brought to them by GMAC. Automotive financing, mortgage, real estate, insurance. The family of GMAC Financial Services. Where do diehard Mac fans go for the latest in Mac news and information? Mac-sports.com, the official website of the Mid-American Conference. That's Mac-sports.com for news, notes, stats, standings, and contests. Read headlines from across the country in the Mac beat. Want to know what's on the air? Mac-sports.com is your source for the latest Mac TV and radio schedules and links. You can even watch highlights and listen to coaches talk in the Mac multimedia section. Bookmark it today. Mac-sports.com. It comes from stadium stairs at 5 in the morning, from suicides to your lungs scream uncle, and two a days when it's hot enough to fry an egg on your forehead. It's sweat, and there's more to sweat than just water. No wonder, no water, no flavored water, no other sports drink on the planet helps put back what sweat takes out better than Gatorade. Chicago Fire Soccer. They've got the fancy footwork. They've got the scores. See the Fire take on DC United next Sunday at 2 on My 50 Chicago. Looking for the perfect way to stay in touch? U.S. Cellular can help you keep in touch no matter where you are. With national plans that include unlimited call me minutes, 7 p.m. nights and weekends, and free incoming text messages. Plus, get a free Samsung SEH U520 with MP3 player and Bluetooth technology when you buy one for just $29.95. A U.S. Cellular will make sure you get everything you need and nothing you don't. U.S. Cellular is wireless where you matter most. U.S. Cellular connects with you. Jeff Jennick with his uh, field goal unit. And, uh, of course, kicker Sean Dutcher on that Eastern Michigan sideline uh, trying to keep the spirits up after Dutcher has missed his second field goal attempt of the day. And for Joe Novak and yeah, this Northern Illinois football team, first three possessions, points on the board. Touchdown, two field goals. Last three possessions, punts, all of them. And let's see what they get under the direction of uh, quarterback Dan Nicholson. As he'll go to his uh, his tailback Justin Anderson who had the big first half Anderson is met by middle linebacker Daniel Holtzclaw who got some help from Eric Young that fine defensive end. I don't think coach Novak and company are really panicking right now. They've dodged a couple bullets. They're down by one. They know they can run the ball. There's plenty of time on the clock. I think they're going to try to come out and run the ball eat time off the clock get a touchdown and give Eastern Michigan the ball back with a long field. That's what they're trying to do right now. Three wide receivers to the left and they'll throw that bubble screen to Matt Simon and Simon will step out of bounds. And Dan Nicholson continues to have a, a very efficient day throwing the football but remember it was the fourth quarter a week ago today uh, here inside Husky Stadium where a 31 to 14 lead just evaporated under an have a couple of turnovers that Southern Illinois converted into touchdown. And that's the question right now you have to ask yourself if you're an NIU fan or a coach or a player is how do you play from behind? They, you saw them give up a lead last week. Now they're down by one. Let's, what kind of character does your team have right now to come back and try to get a W out of this? Key third down for Northern Illinois. Line to make it the 30-yard line. Nicholson with time. He's going to come underneath to Justin Anderson. But Anderson is going to get popped. Well, making uh, that initial play was uh, Spencer Smith. And then Smith got a lot of help from Andre Hatchett. So Hatchett cleaned things up. The 225 sophomore. Four straight three and outs now for Northern Illinois here in the second half. Four straight three and outs. And let me ask you this question, Michael. How big is that drop touchdown pass by Northern Illinois earlier? Enormous. That's enormous now. What Doug is referring to is Britton Davis, who had uh, what looked to be a 
big play lightning bolt touchdown in his hands as he had separated from the Eastern Michigan secondary and uh, didn't come down with the football. Now Andy Dittbenner's boot will be returned by Nate Beard. Beard over the 40-yard line. Well, uh, a return of six for Nate Beard and now fine operating position for Eastern Michigan to begin this second drive of theirs here in the fourth quarter, still holding just the one-point lead. They have a one-point lead, and the thing is, they're getting the ball into the red zone. They're getting inside the five. They just cannot put the ball in the end zone, and then they cannot make the go-ahead field goal. So right now, they have to find a way to get a touchdown because right now, I don't think they have a lot of confidence in their kicker. Well, Andy Schmidt back on the football field, and uh, oh my, has an Andy Schmidt become uh, most effective here in the second half. That offset running back is Pierre Walker with motion out of tight end Ken Bonet. Give the football to Walker. And Walker got met as he crossed the line of scrimmage. And that was John Tranchatella, where's number 42, the sophomore middle linebacker who has taken over for Tim McCarthy. McCarthy was injured uh, throughout the course of the preseason and now lost for the year. Come inside the 10 minute mark now. Stick around, pull up a chair, put your feet up, and enjoy. Here on ESPN Plus, Michael Regai with the Doug Chapman, our producer Greg Logan, director Howard Miller, and all of our terrific crew. Somebody's getting off the snide here in the next 10 minutes to grab their first win of the year. The other will go to 0 and 3. Schmidt wants to put it up. Now Schmidt is going to check down, and he's got Pierre Walker. Walker in open space until that closed down real quick. Boy, an outstanding hit from Corey Hansen. Great. One on one, hot huh, dog out in uh, on the edge in open space. Great tackle. That's not an easy tackle to make, especially on a guy that's a shifty. As a run, running back get in open space, these are the hardest guys to get down. That's a great open field tackle because if he doesn't bring him down, it's a go ahead first down for Eastern Michigan. 210 pound sophomore. Now, these linebackers from Northern Illinois, they're not real big. I mean, uh, Hansen's 210 pounds, Allen's 210 pounds. Tell us 220, but they do fly to the football. Yes, they do. All right, third and two now. Line to make of the 49 yard line. Eastern Michigan 7 to 13 on third down. Midfield strike, but he didn't get there. He's going to come up short. That's Larry English on the bottom of that stack, along with outside backer Josh Allen making the stop. Larry English has been very, very active this entire game, playing in Eastern Michigan's backfield, putting pressure on the quarterback. And right now they're going to ride his momentum and depend on him like he did on that to make some big plays to help put Northern Illinois' offense back on the field. That'll get Zach Johnson back on. Johnson's been impressive today, punting the football for Eastern Michigan. Greg Turner, the single safety spot back at the 10-yard line for Northern. Well, that rugby-style punt from Johnson is he's going to try to boot it away from Greg Turner. But Northern Illinois saying, Turner, fire, get out of there. As that football will finally roll to a stop at the six-yard line as Northern Illinois is going to have to play on the long field now inside the eight-minute mark with Eastern Michigan holding this one-point lead. All right, let's take a look at uh, some others around the Mid-American Conference. There's a good one going on, huh, in, uh, in Bloomington, Indiana. Akron Zips trail by three as they're in the fourth quarter, 27-24, Indiana. Temple's Owls looking for their first win of the year. They were down 10-zip, and they've come back to take a 17-16 lead over the Connecticut Huskies. And how about Ohio's Bobcats in the second quarter? Frank Solich in the game trying to go to 3-0 tied with Virginia Tech. Now Northern Illinois will run the football. Justin Anderson tried to get to the edge, and he was dragged down from behind. As that, uh, that tough core linebackers for Eastern Michigan got some help from uh, Ryan uh, Downer. Downer, the 200-pound redshirt freshman who wears number 10, got the start today as Chris May, the starter, the sophomore, out with injury. We talked earlier in the game about both of these teams being 0-2, Michael. And I'm telling you, you're seeing a good ball game because no one wants to go 0-3. Both of these teams came in with a chip on their shoulder and have something to prove, and neither team is going to lay down. That's why it's turned into a great ball game. Well, you're right. How devastating would it be for Northern Illinois? And that pass is picked off. Picked off as thrown into a crowd. Was quarterback Dan Nicholson, and it was intercepted by middle linebacker uh, Daniel Holtzclaw. But wait a minute. We've got a 
flag. Holds claw on the IMT. And let's see who the flag was on. Holding on the offense, number 70. The penalty is declined. Eastern Michigan's ball in the interception. First down. The turnover situation bit Dan Nicholson and uh, Northern Illinois last week. And again, Holtzclaw. I think Holtzclaw, though, made a terrific break on the football, though, uh, Doug. He made a terrific break. You see, he's kind of sneaking around in the middle of the field. He kind of baited Nicholson in that. Nicholson thought he had the outside of the field open. Great anticipation on the throw. And like you said, turnovers. Never do you want to have a turnover, and especially not at this point in the game and this deep backed up in your own territory. Look at now Jeff Jennick. He's going to run out of the I formation with uh, Pierre Walker at the tail of the 10. Walker on the call. He'll slither off that left side behind the blocks of left tackle T.J. Lang and left guard Andy Fretz. Walker got a couple. So this drive starts just outside the red zone at the 21-yard uh, line. And uh, Walker able to uh, bang his way for a couple. Let's call it second and eight. The drive started at the 16-yard line. Let me correct that. And Walker got two, so let's call it second and eight. Doug, we're now inside the seventh minute mark. Yes, we are. And time is a factor right now if you're in Northern Illinois because with the, with, with right now, Eastern Michigan is looking to just control the clock, move the ball, and hope to get a touchdown out of this. They don't want to try to kick a field goal. Terrence Blevins, the big tailback, was running at the up back. They ran that inside trap beautifully, and Blevins has got a first down as he pulls his way down to the two-yard line. A great run. A great, great, great run by the fullback right here. I mean, no, this is nothing fancy, just north and south running. Give it to the fullback, straight dive play, gets it down to the one-yard line. That, Northern Illinois has not seen that play all game. They definitely were not expecting it right then. Eastern Michigan again with that play clock uh, starting to run down. And maybe, maybe they're doing that a little bit by design, too. They've called their second time out. So Terrence Blevins, who's a senior, third or fourth tailback on this football team, but you know, packs uh, 225 pounds on his frame. And now that for the first time today, we see Jeff Jennick going into that eye formation with Blevins as the up back. Exactly. NIU has not seen that, and I doubt very seriously if they thought that the up back was going to get the football and it paid off dividends for Eastern Michigan. Terrence Blevins, the uh, junior out of Denby High School on the east side of Detroit. He's had a pretty uh, proud football tradition. Detroit Public School League. And Andy Schmidt has done a most effective job of running his offense. He's got him knocking on the door here. They put 14 unanswered points on the board after they trailed 13-0. And now trying to add to it again, Blevins with Walker behind him in the eye. This is Pierre Walker. He got stacked up, stacked up at the one-yard line as that uh, front four. Northern Illinois defense that keep Walker out of the end zone. I think right now, if you're in Northern Illinois, you're playing not to let them score and hope they try to tempt a field goal. But Eastern Michigan gets no, they get no, they get no, no type of line movement up front. NIU gets great. It's low, it's a great surge. There was, there was a stalemate up front, nowhere for the running back to go. Yeah, but Doug, if you're Jeff Jennick, uh, how confident are you in throwing Sean Dutcher out there again? He's virtually missed two chip shots already today. Exactly. All right, second down and one now for the football at the one-yard line. Pierre Walker again. Walker battles his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Eastern Michigan. I think we're seeing it. We're seeing it. The fans here are seeing a repeat of last week. They're seeing their team start off strong and not able to finish the game in the second half, especially in the fourth quarter. At home. You see right here, Pierre just gets the ball off tackle, just fights, and just keeps fighting. He wanted it more right than the defenders did. And the end result is six points. That's Sean Dutcher. This is where he missed the field goal attempt a moment ago. Now we'll try to add the PAT to put Eastern Michigan on top by eight. And Dutcher will do that. Now Eastern Michigan still a one possession game though. Don't go anywhere. The Eastern Michigan Eagles with 21 unanswered points. Pierre Walker to the end zone. Northern Illinois with the football. When we get you back. 
likes sporty. She prefers sensible. He's into convertibles. She's into convenience. He likes to take it with him. She likes to bring it to her. So what do they have in common? They shop with confidence from the dealers in Automart Magazine and Automart.com. In print. Or online. Use the ad code in Automart Magazine. Enter that code on Automart.com. Get color photos and detailed vehicle information. You're just one page. Or one click away from the perfect car. Shop smart. Use Automart. You are killing me, Birdwood. Hey, take the secret shortcut. Never heard of the secret shortcut. Because it's a secret ham. Take it. Not bad, Birdwood. You ever taken this trail, Birdwood? Once, including now. Now would be a good time to have accident forgiveness. Not too bad. Or new car replacement. Your choice auto insurance. Only from Allstate. Birdwood. Are you in good hands? Oh, that's pretty funny, right? My face plan with a razor, unlimited data add-on and a pearl, and a family time plan with two Samsung T629s. Wow. Yeah. How did you do that? Yeah. I'm a matchmaker. Looking for a mobile match? Look no further than Mobile One, a T-Mobile exclusive dealer. No matter the phone, price, or plan, we know exactly what you need. Stop in today and match up with the all-new Moto Riser. Mobile One, we're not heroes, just matchmakers. Wow. Call 1-800-NEW-2-MOBILE or surf by MyMobileOne.com. Whatever the season, when a storm gathers, so do we. The State Farm Catastrophe Team, a full-time force of 2,500 people whose only mission is to be there in times of crisis, working with local State Farm agents to bring help and hope to more people than any other company. And we'll be there for you, too. Afternoon's Mac West Division battle has been brought to you by GMAC Financial Services, the financial services people from General Motors, also by Marathon, who fuel the American spirit and by our good friends at Huntington Bank, a bank invested in people. Jeff Jennick has made a big investment into uh, his offense, uh, triggered by quarterback Andy Schmidt, and they have uh, come up aces with 21 unanswered points as Jennick and his Eagles try to win in this building for the first time in 10 years and end a six-game losing slide overall to Northern Illinois. But a lot of football to go. Eastern Michigan by eight. That football line drive around to the 23-yard line. And Northern Illinois on that return. Northern Illinois gets a very solid return. And that was from one of the up men as we take a look at our storylines today. And Doug Chapman, this throw to uh, wide receiver Britt Davis. Britt Davis. Britt Davis just drops that one. That's a go-ahead touchdown. And then right here, the great play by Holslaw, reading the, reading the quarterback's eyes, making the pick. Those two plays right there were monumental in changing that, the, 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 the pit, swimming, swim, swiveling the momentum of the game towards Eastern Michigan. But again, still a one-possession game. Northern Illinois, how do they respond? Down by eight. Nicholson's back in the pocket to throw. Firing that throw. As closing out of the secondary was Jacob Wyatt, that strong safety. The throw was intended for Greg Turner. I think with the type of offense Northern Illinois has, they don't play well from behind. They, they, they run the ball and they run it well. You can't run yourself back into the lead when you're behind. And right now, Nicholson has to make some throws right now that I'm not sure he's very, very comfortable with making. Britt Davis, Greg Turner, Matt Simon, the three wide receivers, Justin Anderson at the tail for quarterback Dan Nicholson. Run that stretch play on the ground. Justin Anderson is cut free. Anderson inside the 10 and got tripped up on a touchdown saving tackle Big. by Eastern Michigan's Jason Jones, who ran down Anderson from behind. Big play. Take it off tackle. They pull the center around. Great block on the linebackers. Get the guys down, and he does the rest. Great hustle on the play. Well, that's a great, great run. Great run by Anderson. Well, Jason Jones, a 270 pounds, tracked him down. 47 yards on that tilt of the football for Justin Anderson. 26 carries for a buck 61 and a touchdown now. 
Northern Illinois at the 12-yard line. Counter Trey. This is the backup tailback, Chad Span. Span was uh, greeted at the seven-yard line as uh, free safety Ryan Downer on that hit. So Span giving a quick respite to Justin Anderson, but now Anderson back on the football field. And I think right now Novak is going to be complacent just running the ball right now. They know they can move Eastern Michigan up front. They just have to actually execute and get the ball in the end zone. Then the question comes about the two-point conversion. A four receiver look with Anderson at the tail on second down and six. Nicholson to put it up. Look at Enzo. Guns his throw and it's caught. Touchdown. Northern Illinois. Nicholson on the money to Brandon Davis, the senior tight end. They get the Huskies back with it two. right here Nicholson drops back looks to his right and puts a laser I'm talking about a, he, he delivered that ball there was there was there was no air underneath that ball he put it right in, in, his, in his numbers for the touchdown well, it brings the Northern Illinois deficit to two and they will go for two to try to get this tied up after Brandon Davis with a touchdown catch that bunch formation to the right for Nicholson Trying to tie it up, fourth quarter. Nicholson will get flushed, and his throw is incomplete. He was looking to the pylon for Greg Turner. Turner had uh, come free by a couple of steps. Did Nicholson rush that throw? He put a little air in it. He looked like he, the guy was open, it was, and he, he had to just put the ball right on him. He just put a little too much air. He looked mildly rushed on that throw. Good protection up front. He wasn't pressured too much. He just... He just he just delayed putting the ball on him. He could have put the ball on him a couple steps before that. He's just he kind of froze and he held on to it. He held on too long. Held it too long. Well, that throw comes out. Although the uh, the Husky dog liking what uh, what he sees in terms of Northern Illinois getting in the end zone. I mean that ended a four possession drought. They had four three and outs until they got the big play from tailback Justin Anderson that set up the touchdown throw. From Dan Nicholson to tight end Brandon Davis. A world of time left, though, inside Husky Stadium with Eastern Michigan. And it all falls on Northern Illinois' defense right now. They have to make Eastern Michigan go three and out, get the ball back to their offense with good field position, and the offense has to put points on the board with a kicker that Northern Illinois has. That's also a big, big plus for them to have right now. Northern Illinois drive four plays 58 yards in a minute and one two-point game now with Eastern Michigan on top Nendek will drive Dante Gage two yards deep and that Eastern Michigan kick return unit not able to wedge out anything for Dante Gage as Northern Illinois kick cover squad flying the gauge and got him on the ground at the 12 yard line if Gage could do that over again, I think he might have hit a knee on that one. All right, let's go back and uh, take a look at uh, what's happening in stores, Connecticut, today as we keep you abreast of this football Saturday around the Mid American Conference at our Gatorade scoreboard. The Temple's Owls looking for that, uh, that first win for Al Golden this year and have a one point lead with 2.36 left. Temple trying to hang on, Eastern Michigan trying to hang on. They'll start this drive for the 12-yard line with 4.15 left. And this is tailback Pierre Walker. Walker will wedge his way out over the 15-yard line. Walker was taken down on uh, that hit by that outside linebacker, Josh Allen. And Allen also got some help from Zach Holy Cross, who's getting some time now, the senior. At a defensive line spot, that's because Craig Rush has been lost for the game due to injury. This is a big second down for the defense right now. If they can keep them from getting anything big and bring them to a third and long, that'll be huge and give them the ball back with enough time for them to do something with. Pierre Walker, 25 carries for 66 yards. 
Doug, it doesn't sound, it's not gaudy numbers, but what he's done, they've been able to control the football uh, on the ground with Walker. Now run the reverse again. And uh, popped to the ground was uh, wide receiver Tyler Jones. Jones, the backup quarterback. Well, let's uh, give a listen to how Alex Kuba really put a stick. Kuba, number 37, and Bradley Pruitt on Tyler Jones. if uh, everything's not buckled down, right? Yes, it will. Bradley Pruitt on that stick. Third and five inside the three-minute mark. Big play for Northern Illinois. D in the Eastern Michigan offense. That quick in route was fired on time and caught by Tyler Jones. The backup quarterback out of Bellevue, Michigan, is going to come up about a half yard short. They needed to get to the 22-yard line. They'll spot the football outside the 21. And Northern Illinois has gotten their stop as this clock will come near the two-minute mark. Well, Northern Illinois' defense did exactly what the coach asked them. So now it's time for the offense to put together a scoring and possibly game-winning drive. Zach Johnson has had a big day putting the football to boot it away. The great Turner. Johnson's going to hang his putt high. Turner says I'm fair catching at the 38-yard line. And that's where the Northern Illinois offense will start. And Doug Chapman, let's remember that in Chris Nendick, the Rosa finalist, Northern Illinois, down by two with a minute 54 left, has one of the finest and strongest and most accurate field goal marksmen in all of the college football landscape. Yes, he does. And what it is, they've given Northern Illinois a short field. We're only a, they're only a few plays away from putting themselves in Nendick's range. And that's, that right there could come back and get NIU a victory today. So the drive will start for the 38-yard line. Well, Nendick is fully capable from 50. So you figure they've uh, they got to get about, to, oh, maybe 27 to 30 yards, and Nicholson's going up top. He'll check down underneath, and Daniel Holtzclaw with the defensive play as he had uh, Justin Anderson defended. Crowd thought there was a premature contact. It'll fall incomplete. I don't, I don't agree with the crowd. I, I, it, was, it looked like that pass was right at the line of scrimmage, so I don't think they could have called a pass interference call on that. A minute 49 left out for Dan Nicholson. Tried to lead a game-winning drive here for Northern Illinois, and he's looking to throw. Going to throw the out route and going up and making the outstanding catch is Matt Simon. Simon in the crowd, elevating the hole. catch he goes up and gets it he doesn't get his feet down but i believe that the referee says he was pushed out he would have come down if not being pushed out of bounds that's the rule now in football if the player was going to come down in bounds and, is, and he is pushed out by the defender they will give you the catch at that spot 18 yards at a first down now but wait a minute inside the two minute mark of course Let's see if uh Jeff Jennick wants that reviewed and looked at from upstairs. As referee Stan Evans will discuss it. It is under review. And inside the two minute mark, it is under review. Let's see, Doug Chapman. Only need one foot down and the ball control. He never got down in bounds, but did he get uh, ushered out of bounds? That left foot. Looked like it may have come down in bounds, but the question that the referees have to ask is if he was not pushed, would he have come down with the ball in bounds? That's what is under review right now, I'm sure. They're trying to see if the two defenders pushed him from down, pushed him out of bounds from him coming down in bounds. But Darren Matthews wears number four and linebacker, along with free safety Ryan Downard in coverage. Now, what if Simon come down in bounds? Well, referee Stan Evans is going to come over here and uh, go get the same look that we just had. With a 
minute and 44 left. That was an 18-yard hookup from quarterback Dan Nicholson to wide receiver Matt Simon, but will it stand? Stan Evans and his refereeing uh, mates are taking a look at right now. And while they're doing that, uh, breaking news from uh, college football uh, expert uh, from ESPN, Joe Shad, who is reporting today that former Notre Dame quarterback, Demetrius Jones, has uh, announced that he's going to transfer here to Northern Illinois to play for Joe Novak, and he will be eligible to do that in the beginning of the 2008 football season. So, Nicholson is junior year. Demetrius Jones with playing time at Notre Dame, that puts him maybe potentially starting next year. A much different dynamic on the quarterback situation here for Joe Novak. It definitely does. I was in a situation in, at Marshall University where Chad Pennington was our starting quarterback our freshman year. We had Eric Presser who transferred in from the University of Florida, and they redshirted Chad Pennington the following year and let Eric Presser play. Now, I'm not sure how they're going to handle the situation here, but that does shake up things at the quarterback position, definitely. Well, let's see. Our producer, Greg Logan, director Howard Miller, they've uh, done their usual... Uh, Outstanding job in getting this uh, this image blown up. Now, you look at Darren Matthews and Ryan Downard in coverage here. Simon is the foot down. It looks like Chapman, you think it is I anyway. Think that left foot tapped inbound. I believe it did. I believe his left leg taps right there. But does he have possession of the football? I think he does. I think that's a catch even with him being pushed out of bounds. After review, replay confirms a call in the field. Outstanding work by our camera crew here, ESPN Plus. Very fine, a group of pros behind the lenses today here at Husky Stadium. All the guys and gals at the tape room, terrific stuff. Much of Greg Logan, our producer, and Howard Miller, our director, getting that superimposed for you. So Simon's catch will stand for 18 yards. The first out carry goes to Justin Anderson, trying to get a block. But Darren Matthews with that outstanding job as he chased down Justin Anderson. How about the play for the 235-pound senior out of Redford Thurston High School? He got off that block and hauled down Anderson. Not only did he get off that block, he hauled down Anderson inbounds. So the clock continues to run, which is in favor for, for Eastern Michigan. Nicholson on second and eight will trigger his throw, and it is caught. It is caught by Matt Simon, and uh, that is where Joe Novak is going to burn the second time out for Northern Illinois. The football is at the 35-yard line between the 35 and 36. Doug Chapman right from here. It's a 52 to 53 yarder for one of the best in college football, Chris Nendek, who is uh, certainly capable of that for Northern Illinois. Yes, every yard they get now is putting them closer and closer into his range. And I know right now, Eastern Michigan fans have to be thinking about the field goal that they missed earlier. How they are, might come back to haunt them. Two of them. Two of them. Because if Nendick makes this, they're going to walk out here with a one-point win. To reset everything for you, Eastern Michigan with three unanswered touchdowns after they trailed 13 nothing, grabbed the 21-13 lead. Northern Illinois responded on the touchdown throw from quarterback Dan Nicholson to tight end Brandon Davis. Two-point Eastern Michigan lead. Third down and three, line to make the 32. Nicholson trying to buy time. Threw underneath in a crowd, and it is caught. It wound up being caught by Vernon Sims after that football was being banged around by uh, all about three or four set of hands. We have a flag down. They have some linemen downfield. I'm not, I'm not sure what. They're trying to set up that screen. Was that Jason Anye Buaga who wound up with the football? Yeah, I think it was. But was he the first? I think he may have touched it first. Is that illegal touching or lineman downfield? I believe that would make, that may be what the flag is. He touched the football first. He touched it first, and that's a legal touch, and they're going to call that. Now, if, if deflected to him, he can run around with it all day. But if he's the first one to touch it, that's going to be a penalty. 
They were trying to set up screen to Justin Anderson, the tailback number 21. Look at on Ye Buaga, Doug Chapman. He reached up that uh, that left paw and got a piece of the football. Ultimately caught the football. He caught it twice. But it's a legal touching. <laughs> he actually caught it twice, gave it to the running back. The running There's back. There's no flag on the play. Oh. Jeff Jennick may the be the one now. Tip by an Eastern Michigan defender, which makes all players on the offensive team eligible to catch the pass. Let's see. Now, did an Eastern Michigan defender... The pass was caught, completed in advance. The result of the play is a first down, Northern Illinois. In order for that to be legal, an Eastern Michigan player had to initially tip the ball before it hit the line. Did you see it that way? I didn't see. I Where? Didn't see it. I didn't see it get hit. Watch 65 in red. Anye Buaga. Did he get a peep? Oh, oh it was. It. There it is, right there. Yep. There it is. Wow. It was Spencer Smith who initially got pin, a piece. A pinball. Well, Jason Anye Buaga, number 65, the offensive guard, the sophomore, the 310-pounder, with a big first-down reception for Northern Illinois. And how often do you, how often do you say that the, the guard? Eastern Michigan is challenged of calling the field. The play is now under review. How often do you say when, when the right guard keeps the drive alive with a reception? Well, let's get another look. Now, watch Spencer Smith, number 41 in white. Now, this ball is tipped right there. So it's anybody's ball. Then Anye Buaga had a hand on it. Then Justin Anderson had a hand on it. Then Anye Buaga put it away. Spencer Smith right there, number 41. All you have to do is look at the stripes on the ball. You see if you can tell the, traje the trajectory of the football change. It was tipped. It was definitely tipped. By an Eastern Michigan defender. Derek Hunter, the sophomore cornerback, also had the football in his hands. Spencer Smith, Anya Buaga, Justin Anderson, Derek Hunter, back two for each side, and back to Anya Buaga, Doug. I said they're playing pinball, not playing football right now. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Well, Eastern Michigan has burned their final timeout. And Northern Illinois, and you know what Northern Illinois is saving it for. 62 seconds left. And Chris Mendek is more than likely the man on the spot. And la you talk about tip passes. Joe Novak was telling us the other day, he said, give all credit to Southern Illinois. But the fact of the matter was in the fourth quarter, as they were coming back, they converted three tip passes into catches to keep drives alive that ultimately got them the win at 34-31. Though sometimes that's how the ball bounces. You get some lucky bounces sometimes. And, and on, on that play right there, it's just, it just shows you never know which way that ball's going to go. That ball went through four, I believe, four individuals' hands before it was actually caught. And that's just the way the football bounces sometimes. Well, while we have a second, we uh, certainly want to thank uh, many key people that uh, were vital in uh, helping our preparation this week for Eastern Michigan, Northern Illinois. As you look at Chris Mendek, who could be the man on the spot from Eastern Michigan, their outstanding sports information director, uh, Jim Streeter, the Eastern Michigan Hall of Famer, and of course, head coach Jeff Jennick and his staff. And for Northern Illinois, Donna Turner, sports information director. The call of the field stands as called. Eastern Michigan is charged with the timeout. Well, there you uh, have the uh, decree, the edict from uh, referee Stan Evans. And of course, we greatly appreciate head coach Joe Novak and uh, his Northern Illinois coaching staff for all the help that they provided during the week. 62 seconds left. Eastern Michigan by two at 21-19. Football at the 30-yard line. Northern Illinois with one timeout left. This crowd of 24,000 on their collective feet here inside Husky Stadium. What a bizarre last sequence that started with uh, Matt Simon. Was he inbounds or not in making that very terrific grab on the sideline and then that tip pass a moment ago. So first to 10 from the 30. Give the football to Justin Anderson on the cutback. Anderson got five as he reached the 25 before he was uh, thrown to the ground. By outside linebacker Darren Matthews as that clock moves to 45 seconds. Been some bizarre plays this afternoon, but you have to expect that with two hungry teams coming in here, 0-2, starving for their first win. 
Yeah, you can see where this is coming down to. It's on Chris Nendek. He knows it, and everybody in here knows it. 30 seconds left on second and five. Justin Anderson, he got dropped for a three-yard loss. Excellent penetration. And if that's a hold on Northern Illinois, oh, did that come at a most inopportune time. Now, there's something else you got to take into effect right now. If you're Coach Novak, you want your kicker to kick from the center of the field. But right now, they're backed up. So they have to run a play to the wide side of the field. Well, that's going to be a hold on Northern Illinois. Holding. Number 50 on the offense. The foul is 10 yards from the previous spot. Replay second down. Eddie Adamski, how enormous is that? Where the football was, it was a 45-yard field goal. Now from here, it was at the 28 when that ball was uh, put into play. Now it's a 52-yard field goal from here. And the clock is now beginning to move again. Second and 15. They may have to take a shot here through the air. Nicholson does. He's got screen set up. Anderson with blocking. Anderson inside the 20. Justin Anderson down to the six a flag with down. another late flag behind that. That ball may have also been tipped. How crucial will this be? It's going to set Northern Illinois back again as that flag was thrown from the back judge in the end zone. Unless they have a hold downfield. Holding. Holding on the offense, number 17, during the run. The foul is penalized 10 yards from the spot of the foul. That's Greg Turner. Northern Illinois retains possession of the ball. Second down. How would you like to be Chris Nendek right here? I mean, you bounced around like a yo-yo. You thought you were going to have a 42-yarder. Then you thought you might have a chip shot. You've had been back to where it's going to be over 50, and now it's back to near 50 again with only 11 seconds left. Nendek may be a little calmer right now than I'm sure than Coach Novak is. I'm sure he's going crazy on the sideline. Probably more calm than us. Now to kneel down Dan Nicholson in the center of the football field at the 34-yard line and call timeout. a timeout. Northern Illinois, that's Northern's third and final timeout this half. How are your hearts today, everybody? Chris Nendek, he knows it is on him. Career long for Nendek is 52 yards. This is probably going to be put down right around the 40. This should be in the vicinity of a 50-yard field goal. You hit it, you knock it dead center, you run off a winner, Doug Chapman. You don't, you go to 0-3. Not just that, but right now, Nendik, he's not he's not a, a Lou Groza finalist for nothing. Big players make big plays in big games. And right now, he's one of the big players on their roster, and this is what they expect him to do. This is what he does, and hopefully he can put it through. He's hit a couple today. Out of the uh, long snap of Nolan Owen, it'll be held by Greg Turner. A 50-yard field goal for Lou Rosa Award finalist Chris Nendek to win it. It's blocked! Eastern Michigan has come up with a victory as Nendek's field goal was blocked as time expired. Wow. trajectory. Man. Wow, Eastern Michigan got it done today. What a gutty, gritty, absolute gut check of a comeback for the Eastern Michigan Eagles. Great ball game. Who trailed 13 nothing. Let's go back and take a look and see who may have got a hand on this as time was expiring. Our first energy play of the game. We'll get another look at it. That just never got uh, a trajectory on it in the air off the leg of Nendek. He just drove it a little too low. Drove it right into, I believe it hit an Eastern Michigan player's chest. And Eric Young. Oh, and look at the jubilation reigning on the sideline of the Eagles of Eastern Michigan. They were completely dominated in the first half and fell into a 13-0 hole as Joe Novak in Northern Illinois fall to 0-3 with back-to-back -back losses in Husky Stadium. 
Eastern Michigan's Eagles celebrating with their band of fans who made the trip from Southeast Michigan. They beat Northern Illinois 21-19. That's Rusty Wallace, amazing driver. He's also my uh, third cousin once removed. That's his brother, Mike Wallace, driver of the Geico Chevrolet. I can see why Geico sponsors Mike. And when he does well, people will think about saving money on car insurance. Whereas if I were driving that car, all they could think about is, there goes Lauren Wallace, greatest thing that ever climbed into a race car. Poor fella. 